How how are you ahead of me? I'm on the fucking Amazon cast. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we are we are officially recording now. Um, it's gonna bother me that you're ahead. How this Chicago internet stuff is why I, <laughs> it's it's so awful. It's why I love watching games on the rabbit ears. I just don't understand how I'm ahead of you if we're all streaming from Amazon together at the same time. I oh I don't know. Oh pits pits pits. Wow. Well, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We have something to look forward to. A Kyle's pitch wow. is about to happen. Um, I, as of right High now... version of hell. Yeah. This is bullshit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait. That's a great play. Look at him go. Okay. Well, for everyone I mean, watching... a little wide open. K- Kyle Pitts was wide open because he's so great at separation. He, uh... He just got... What, what's that? A gain of 30? Uh, I'm joined by... The esteemed Matthew Lippin and the ever noble and ever growing and fantasy clout Bevo. Um, I think Curran's going to be joining us in just a little bit, so I don't want to get into tears too fast because then we'll just have to backtrack whenever Curran, you know, trons in and says he hi ho hum. But uh, we are four weeks into the season. Thursday night football kickoff has just started for week five. Any uh, immediate thoughts you guys would like just to get off your chest to uh, assess the lay of the land or comments as a whole? Wow. Oh, Mooney's got to catch that. This is a big week for a bunch of teams here in Apex. Yeah. You have a couple of two and two teams facing three and one teams. And if Bevo or Keiko can pull out dubs, that puts them in a nice position and, you know, kind of brings the playoff projected playoff teams kind of back to the two and two teams, maybe expanding the playoff hopefuls in apex this year a little more. So, um, so I, I did a little looking for you. Like it turns out that one and three is, is pretty dead. Like if you get to two and three, there was one person I think last year that went two and two to two and three and then made playoffs afterwards. But it is something where like you're, you're pretty spot on that, Two games under 500 this early in the season really is a early enough nail in the coffin for you. Well, so obviously last year was the first year we've done this division oppo- divisional opponents where we you faced them three times in the year. But this was the f- that was the first time we've had three 11 win teams make the playoffs and one nine win. So if that holds, I mean, there's only gonna be one spot for a team with a handful of losses. And once you're already at three losses, that puts you behind the eight ball a good chunk. We'll obviously see what happens. Kern, welcome in. Oh, wow. Well, wow. Kern, well, welcome aboard. We were just giving kind of initial overview thoughts of the season before we got into power rankings. We didn't want to start on power rankings and leave you out of that because you're, you're such a respected voice in the field of power rankings. We didn't want to get started on that without you. Um so, Kurt, do you have any initial overview thoughts or views of the lay of the land of the season so far? Um, no, not really. I mean, you know, just there's a, there's a clear, um, you know, Drake, no one... let's go! That's a huge start. Oh, that for Drake? Oh, God. Yes. Oh, that's God. a huge um, start. Are you good? Um, yeah, I'm uh, still pretty close right now. You know, I think there's, uh, you know, we're only... You know, first place is only two games ahead of last place, so we're still we're still in the thick of it. Well, that's uh that's that's very fair. Drake London just scored a fine touchdown. Um, that's good for I think basically every dynasty league I'm in. Uh, you love to see that, and uh, congratulations, Lippy, on that. <clears throat> but uh, well, I guess we could go ahead and get into it. If what we have been doing on these is just kind of going down the matchups and adjusting power rankings that way. If anyone is opposed to that, we can certainly change it up. Otherwise, we're going to keep going with that. Is that all right with everybody? Yes. Okay. That Remember sounds great. So uh, on my screen, um, I have got... Um, my matchup is obviously at the top. I think everyone put Sleeper put theirs at the top. I, I'd be honored, of course, if Sleeper... Showed everyone my matchup first. But my matchup is first against Monstar. So let's start with those two teams. Monstar took a bit of a skid the previous week. I, th- I think 
my team held constant. Speaking of skins, let's go ahead and get started with uh, uh, Zebra Nation. Can go ahead and get started talking about my team, and then I'll have the last word there, and then we'll move on to Monster. Well, I guess looking at my official list, let's see. I have it pulled up right here, and I've just got the. Uh, I just put my sealed stamp of approval on it, and it's been mailed off to, to uh, Apex um, board just okay. so, just okay. so they can re they can review it. Um, I had you initially previous rankings as number five. You were in contenders. Um, you were you were behind Monstar at the time, who you know we'll get to. Um, now you have you have you've skidded down to seven. So. Oh man! I think you know, like, and look, uh, still in the contender tier. So I think that uh, I think it's strong. You know, you're you're three and one. You have a eighth ranked points four as of you know week four. Um, you know, some of my quick notes on you are you know you you probably have the best quarterback outside of Josh Allen, which will always always buoy the numbers. You know, um, you know you you. You hit pretty hard on DK. It appears. It appears that he, um, that uh, who was it? Fucking Shane Waldron. Is that the asshole who yeah, left? It was in uh, Chicago. Yeah. yeah. It appears that he is. He is the cause of all the. <laughs> he's a real bad Yeah. He's a real asshole. So um, so he's gone. So everyone over there is just catching fifty pass attempts from uh, Geno Smith. So, yeah. so that's good for you. You know, uh, you have Amon Ra, who's pretty good as well. We know he's great at football. Um. And yeah, you have some interesting bench depth that um, could start coming up in the wide receiver range. You know, your your running backs are a little tough. I mean, I think Brees is has been has been consistent, but I think you know what we kind of expected out of Brees and and guys like Bijan is that they would be you know doing Saquon Barkley things. But you know, they're they're more or less performing well. But you know, you'd probably like them to perform a little better. And uh, you know, you've. You're kind of dealing with a little bit of RB two woes, but maybe maybe it's just uh, you know maybe maybe all this Ramondre shits is one of those things where we we tune in Sunday and then you you know we we come back next week and he's got thirty carries for one hundred fifty yards and you know it's just one of those you know coach speak things that you kind of blow out of proportion. So um, I'll stop there with my ramble and let the other two zebras uh, pitch in okay. and on their thoughts of the ranking. Okay. So I have ANF currently at spot seven. The last of my contenders tier, as of based on the rankings. Okay. I've got I've got A and F at uh, eighth overall in the in the BCS style rankings. So what I built was a method to track if A and F played every schedule, what would his expected win total be? And he has the biggest spread right now negatively in the entire league. He was expected to win one point five games. So, uh, for for now, I'm I'm going to say that ANF is lucky with the schedule he's had, and he is going to have to get incredibly lucky throughout the bye weeks this this year to stay above 500. It's that's some, that's some curious math, but but continue. So ultimately, Alexander, the way I see it is just I mean, you look at Lamar; it's beautiful, Brees. Who cares about his down week? Maybe it hurts. It kind of scares you of his floor, but he's still an electric running back to have. DK, Amonra, that's awesome. That's awesome. Then the issues start. Stevenson, it's it's scary. And I, I mean, the fumble talk just feels like straight BS when you think got Antonio Gibson back there. But still, that's a weak spot in the team. But then also wide receiver three. Alexander's really hoping Addison kind of settles in there or JSN. But then if it's JSN, I mean, they couldn't have had a better game script last week with 50-plus pass attempts from Geno and DK and JSN scored 20 total points. There's not too many more games that are going to be like that coming up. And then, I mean, Pitts of Despair and Keenan Allen, that's just... I don't know how that gets fixed. Hopefully, Leggett maybe gets in that flex form or Ridley and Levis can figure it out, which doesn't look likely. And then just, I mean, if Pitts throws up another stinker, you just got to get rid of him at this point. But he's already outscored probably two of his weeks. Yeah, he's already tied in four on the week. Uh, yeah, this is already his third best week of the year, yeah. and he has three points. So it's it's just once you kind of start look, kind of parsing through that depth, it's a little scary. 
and it's a little iffy. But all, at the end of the day, when you're three and one, you get in the contender tier for me because you're in a nice spot. If he can squeak out a win this week against Monstar, which it looks like he might, as long as Evans doesn't go crazy tonight. I mean, that's four and one, and that's in a nice spot to try and sneak into the playoffs. And then anything can happen. So, so first of all, I think that's all very measured and reasonable. Um, the the things I'll say about my team is that my and this is this is more about my power rankings view as a whole. They're not they're not changing as much. Um, I know this is actually I think our first uh, probably we've, we've had the privilege of having Bevo on board, so that perspective is fresh. But um, I think. My power rankings are like are staying much more static than y'all's, and they're not changing as much. And obviously, like you know, I, I think highly of my team, and I, I ranked my team highly. So obviously, that methodology would favor my squad. So there's definite bias there. But um, you know, you think like that that flex spot is ugly because. I've got Ahmad Ra on buy, and everybody's going to have buys, but, you know, obviously one of my best players, my most expensive player of the draft is on buy this week. So, I think I've still got great pieces. I'm not worried about my running backs. Oh, my goodness. Is that uh, is that Godwin? Who is down for the... That's 19. 19. Is it I was going to say Lippy has to, has to send a message, but... I don't know who it is. Yeah, maybe maybe Kate. Is I Dylan McMillan? <laughs> oh, not Jay Milnick. It's, wow. It's, it's wow. McMillan or Trey Palmer or somebody. Anyway, um, hopefully he's okay. But I love my squad. Lamar has proven to be maybe the my best move of the draft, just getting him really quick. Uh, I'm not, not worried about my squad at all. I think Ramondre has had um, tough weeks. I, the Carson Steele experiment is firmly over. Uh, my God, what a mistake <laughs> that was! But uh, yeah, I, I I think like you know like the Pitts thing. Pitts is terrible. This guy, he's he's awful. Like all of his stats, like you know, people have been talking about like the big thing this week is like bringing up how bad his separation numbers are. Like he has been uniquely bad. The one saving grace there that makes me care less about that is that tight end as a whole is terrible and awful and very bad. Like it's just it's just awful. Um, I, I'm just not all that worried about it. I, if I can find a way to improve tight end, I would love to. Am I going to overpay for it when every single tight end basically is just playing like total dog ass? I just don't really care. But that being said, I'm still holding my team. I've got my team in tier two now, which I think my team is going to be in playoffs. I have had to kind of bump every tier down because I've created a new tier. There's a, there's a new tier one. Every other tier has been bumped down, so I have tiers one through five this week. That's one of the only real changes I have. We're um, allowed to just add tiers now. I thought we couldn't do that. I mean, I, I, I'm so. Doing what A and F is saying is, I know A and F tiers are consistent. He's, he's saying he's still in he's still in the perceived elite tier, but he's moved Hunter into a separate universe above the elite tier. Yeah, that's 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 Mount Olympus. Um, yeah. And, and I am I correct in saying that? <laughs> I mean, that's absolutely like if if anyone if anyone doesn't want to put Hunter in Olympus tier, I advise you to repent and pray before your golden god because he is wrathful and will smite you down. Well, we'll um, certainly get to a uh, Hunter's team, but yeah, but Bane, look, you you have I really like your wide receiver depth, and I this looks like a very honestly looking at your squad, this looks like a traditional. I've played this game. I've gone in there with, you know, rough QB, rough running back rooms where all of y'all troll me the entire year about how I have, like, two running backs, probably rostered. But the reality is, you know, you can you can at least fill, you can fill, you know, three, four spots with startable wide receivers. I mean, I think that, you know, Jordan Addison, I, I don't like to chase touchdowns. He... He seems to have gotten a lot of them in just one week back, and I'm impressed by the touchdowns. So I think that's that's fine to chase, cause, just because I mean, look, like some people are just really good in the in the uh, red zone, and I mean, he's historically done that over two years now. So I think that even if he does get five targets a game, he could still get a touchdown every game. And the weeks that he doesn't, you know, who cares? And the weeks that he does, pays you off. And um, and yeah, you know, you've uh, you know, you've You've got the lottery ticket of 
Spears, but that's also tied to the Titans. It's a good squad. I'm not going to shit on, you know, poop on you too, too hard, which is why I think, you know, overall, I think we all kind of have you in the contending tier. But in terms of, like, pure elite squads, just so you know, I don't have a lot of them either. So it's, you know, just like, not, when I look at it, it's not like, you know, a juggernaut oh, God, squad like so I thought about. Um, okay. Okay. So, so let's quickly move on to the other yeah. folks. So for Monstar, Monstar, Monstar here. Now look, things things happen quick in the NFL. Um, <laughs> he, <laughs> medial, he he's the biggest he's the biggest follower on my board. I I uh, so much promise, Monstar. Look, I'm not losing faith in you, buddy. I still think that you have some pieces that could clang and bang, but like I just can't in good faith as a contender. You're one and three, last in points scored. It's it's so tough. I have you at number ten because just because I'm putting you in the hunt because I think you still have upside pieces that could hit. Um, but I can't talk much more on it because I think you'll just be doing a disservice to everyone else. Not to hit on you too hard, but it's just you know you you need to make some interesting trades. You need a Mark Cooper to get traded to. Kansas City, you need some cool shit to happen to you for you to really step back up into the contending world. So maybe a victory over A and F this week. But uh, what about you, boys? What do you What do y'all have, old Monstar? It's been a since our first podcast when you just dubbed him one of the most elite teams that you love so much, Kern. It's just been it's been bad. Curse you, Monstar. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I mean. In terms of, in, obviously, Tua going down hurts his team a little bit. But just ETN, the vibes are just poor. Bigsby looks great running the ball. A-Chan without Tua looks awful. Evans looks like what Evans is, but that's not going to carry his team. And then him getting worthy wrong for four straight weeks is impressive. And he's trying for, for a 5 for 5 this week. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> So, oh god, he is! Oh Jesus! <laughs> I mean, there's an Evans touchdown as we speak, but I mean, oh just, damn, man, up there it is. It, it's like it's a it's death by a million cuts. It's a bunch of mid players at the end of the day. It feels like, and just I mean, I love Amari. I like Evans a lot. DJ Moore. I don't know how you can start him. I mean, we'll get to it, Kern. I think Rome is, if anybody, is probably the receiver you want there. Who, I, how is everyone so open on this play? Every single one of them. Yeah. Is um, yeah. But yeah. sadly, I don't. I think every one in three team is dead in the water. So he's dead in the water. I don't think he has a chance at the playoffs, and I'll be shocked if he makes it. Sadly, I echo a lot of that. Obviously, I'm going to lose this week now for saying that. But um, you know, I I think it's going to be really hard. Uh, the Jags are a dumpster fire. They're talking about trading ETN. That's something that could be interesting if he goes to a team that needs a running back. So maybe that could shake things up. That would blow. That um, would blow for Monster. That would kneecap his team. Well, I mean, it, I can't it's, think it's, of it's a single weird. running back that trades mid season and gets like up to speed in a playbook and then is like utilized like an RB. Well, one. because they're they're talking about trading because they're not going to want to bring him back next year. Um, so, and pay him all the money, <laughs> right? So because you know this is that's a team that's not going to have a lot of cap to to spend. Like they're not going to have any money to spend. So um, he's probably going to be with another team next year anyway. That doesn't matter. Uh, what does matter is that I think it's going to be hard. Uh, I mean, Monster, I, I wish you luck. I don't think it's going to pan out. Um, I've got Mark Andrews in some fantasy, in some dynasty leagues, and it sucks. Um, I think your team's going to have a hard time. Darnold's awesome. I think that's that's a nice little, nice little play there. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be hard for this team to go far, just because there's a lot of there's a lot of teams in your way, and you're going to be fighting from a one and three spot. You know, obviously now that I've said these things, you're going to be two and three. But uh, you know, uh, uh, good luck, it's, man. Um, it's going to be hard. Kern, as someone who it looks like you've decided to stream quarterback, I'd say you wouldn't call yourself starting fields every week, right? I mean, not trusting anything until I know Russell Wilson has been has been uh, pounded into the sand and gone. Nonetheless, Kern, in three weeks when Fields plays the Jets, are you going to look elsewhere? Possibly. No, that that's why I'm holding on to A. Rich for sure, just because I mean, well, like he plays the Jags this week and he has a strew of really prime, juicy matchups, and I feel like 
there's a universe where he just beats the shit out of them with his legs and his abilities, but we'll see. So, yes. And Dar- Monster sticking with Darnold for a third straight week just feels like he's playing with fool's gold at this point. Just, is he, he really think Darnold's going to put up another 25-plus point week? He looks good. That's scary, man. Yeah. He just in London against the Jets. That's gonna be a ten to five game, it feels like. Yeah, I hate that a lot. I I don't want to start any quarterback versus the Jets, let alone any like real pass catchers or any it's just a really tough defense. I he has a team where I think if like you put his team in Lippy's hands, you could do a lot of fun tr- like he's got so many fun moves he could make and he could have made, but I think he's just he froze. Like he so many sell high opportunities, and I think we talked about a couple that you had offered. But it's like there's so many. Like he's got depth for days. Like he's got like just on his bench, he's got like two starting running backs and Tanks Bigsby, which is fine. And like Lad looks good, and Nick Chubb's coming back, and I don't know. Keon he just, he, just, have an he, need, he he need, he needs to trade. But as I was talking with Alexander earlier, you look at a lot of these teams. No one's really hurting for starters per se. Everyone's a bunch of teams are hurting for a tight end. That's different, but like hurting for a flex to where somebody, yeah. would, I mean, where they would take the Browns starting running backs plus Lad for an upgrade somewhere. I don't know who is going to take that trade right now. I would see one thing I was going to do this week is I was going to trade for Amari Cooper just because he's playing Washington. That would have been a fucking like I think that I don't know if y'all were up. I don't know if y'all were sniffing that either, but um. There's talks of him getting traded to another team. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Amari's like the top tier trade candidate but just because of like where his contract sits right now and how competitive the Browns are. Like I don't know. Does does he there might be some front office stuff where he doesn't get as many reps or as much use if trade talks are heating up behind the scenes that you know we might not be aware of. Monster just needs to start finding some wins soon. And maybe his depth is going to help him through the bye. I don't know. It's just, I don't, I don't see how this team turns it around from one and three to squeak in the playoffs when you have five, three and one teams. So, Plus, many, underperforming, teams. so many underperforming assets. It sucks. But, his uh, team has been, he hasn't been ravaged by, I mean, you could say Tua's hurt, a, I mean, obviously he's hurt a Chan and Tua. But besides that, just, it's a bunch of just at, it's just underperforming. It's not a lot of injuries. Like the A chain thing sucks, but I mean you can recover from that. It's 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 he's it's still good in year. How are Algier getting carried? Anyway, uh, y'all want to move on to the next one? <laughs> yeah, so well, I've got I've got Kurt and Joda next. Well, that's a great matchup. That's my second matchup as well. Oh right. man, what a so, matchup! So we've got Kurt helped by King Milkbag. I love that nickname. Um, he, is, he is King Milkbag. Yeah. He, <laughs> He rules all the milk bags in the army of milk bags right now. You have, is, you, you have some great, you have some great nicknames, <laughs> um, Oh, dude, uh, dude, we we are we we are trudging along in the nickname game. Um, so I think we all had current as a contender or elite tier, depending on where you were. Um, we, uh, I mean, I, I've I've kind of consolidated a little bit. I, I mean, I've got. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go first, Kurt. I'll let you go first. I'm interested to, sure. see, to hear what you have to say. All right. So pre, so so last when we first did this, I was I was down at number six, I believe. I was I still held myself into the contender tier with the record and just the fact that right. um, you were two you know, people were back, but it was a very it was, really it was a pessimistic a pessimistic where <laughs> well I didn't feel as great and at, at that moment after week two. You know, but now it's been some time. So you know, now I've moved up from I've flown up the boards from number six to drum roll number five. I am I am I am still in the contender tier. I don't put myself above. I guess that'd be four other teams ahead of me. Um, you know, some notes I have here: re- returning to health. You know, people are coming back, which is great. Um, right now, I have D. Smith, who's on a bye, and that's not too fun. But you know, he'll be back. Um, I think Jordan Mason might be more of a long-term thing than we all think. I think the, you know, CMC wouldn't surprise me if we blink and then it's like, you know, we're still talking about this in week 12 and we don't know when he's coming back and San Francisco's just kind of shelving him. And, you know, Fields, an answer question, as Lippy said, who knows? I kind of like streaming 
quarterbacks who can't throw but can run. That's that's my game plan right now with my quarterback room. So I will I will try to focus on that for the right time. You know, Deontay breaking out is just that's the biggest win of the last two weeks. I'm just gonna hold on to that for dear life and just hope that it continues. And um, you know, I, I think I have sneaky depth that's starting to show out. And uh, the biggest knock I have is that you know, um, Reek is still in hell. It's it's not good. It's He's getting he's getting manufactured touches now because they can't throw him the ball, which is which which gives him five and six point floors. But I mean, you know, I I drafted Reek to catch eighty yard touchdowns twice a game and drop forty points on y'all, and it's it's just not happening. But you know, I think there's lots of lots of room to grow if the Tua injury is less impactful than it seems to be, and from all reports I've seen. Dude could be back by week eight, and if that's the case, I will, you know, if it's week eight, my team's healthy, and my quarterback situation is still, I'll just say average, I will be moving my team up a little bit by maybe to the top of this tier. I don't know if I can break into elite tier unless my quarterback is just rock solid. So um, that's where I'm at. Okay, yeah. I mean, that, that seems very fair. Um it's that's a terrible kick by Young Ho. Um, Kern at the end of the day deserves to be in the contender tier because he's three and one, and Mason looks like it's the pickup of the year. Only question I just have for everybody: Hi, Timo. We'd love your opinion on what tier Kern is in. Um, Brooks, Jonathan Brooks. Looking into it this week, is some did did he have a setback or are they just being super cautious? Because everyone said he was supposed to be ready by started training crap and camp and that was three months ago and he's still on the pup and that's terrifying for this season for him so are they just being extra cautious or just do you think he has a setback well, I, or and, and i have a question we can talk about this as a whole i was confused by the trade why trade away pacheco for him i was very confused well, by that. oh he missed again oh, he got two chances and he missed both damn wow so the trade that luke and i made um I mean, there's. I've been following the Pacheco injury on Twitter like a hawk because obviously he was my precious and he's hurt. Um, I mean, there's news. Speaking of Pacheco, there's news that it wasn't just a fracture. There's news that he had um, ligament damage as well. And there's like a some surgery that you do, like a tightrope surgery, apparently when that happens, and it's confirmed that he had that because of that issue. And so there's. There's this concern about him coming back, too. So the way I thought about it was, you know, I mean, I I had kind of effectively wrote off Pacheco for, I mean, I, I just wasn't sure when he was going to come back. Just based on everything I was seeing and the reports and Andy Reid's updates on him, it just hasn't been anything optimistic. The thing about Brooks is he's, he's unknown. The faults on him is that, you know, you have a running back. Chuba Hubbard, he's balling out, and you have a team that may not be motivated to rush him back because of their... Their, uh, yeah, they're their not, performance, they're but I mean, yeah. sure. But I also thought of it as you know, like I don't think he has a setback. I think it's just, I mean, they're just being careful with him. Like nothing I saw. Like I don't think he could have a setback if he's not even practicing yet. I think he's just they're just being careful with the dude. I mean, I I think that the estimates of what the Twitterverse is saying mm-hmm. is like by week eight or nine he might come back, and then by week ten or eleven he'll be ramped up. And I mean, I think by then I could use him, and that'd be fine. But that's I mean, honestly, now that the trade's concluded, that was kind of where I landed on it because I thought about it for a while. And, I mean, you know, it made sense to give Lippy a guy that maybe he could handcuff in the future. But just all reports I'm seeing and all the little fancy doctors I've followed, they're, they're pretty pessimistic about Pacheco's return for the regular season. And, I mean, there's still a little more unknown positivity, at least where, like, the grief to Brooks occurred like a year ago. And... You know, we're kind of just waiting for him to come back, and I mean, you know, it's. I kind of thought of it like an inconsequential trade. It's pretty. I mean, everything I looked at was pretty dead even. So that was my. Feels God like it, it. It comes down to not. I mean, obviously, if it, they're both going to come back at some point, if Pacheco comes back to full health, obviously, I probably win that trade. And then, I, I mean, is Brooks even going to be relevant this year? Even if he is healthy, it's it's kind of a crapshoot at the end of the day. And it might just be completely inconsequential to where they both suck all year. But we'll see what happens, obviously. Yeah, I was kind of just like, you know, like, I'm not really putting too much weight. Like, my team isn't, like, 
Like, I'm not weighing the comeback of my team on Brooks because I just, in the way I kind of perceived it, I've, I had pretty much written off Pacheco as being a useful starter for, I mean, because if there's a world where he comes back, like, let's say, like, he comes back, I make the playoffs, and it's like the wild card week. Like, am I going to start Pacheco, you know, fresh off an injury in the wild card game? Like, you know, like, like, or in the You can't, you mean, can't like, start him in that first game that. unless they just declare he's back and he's the starter, no question. And there's, like, you know, and then by then you have, like, you know, several weeks of Kareem and Clyde and these guys already establishing themselves. Like, I just don't know. Like, I just. To me, it seems like a crapshoot. I mean, like, the way I looked at it is I'd rather take the guy who at least I know was injured longer ago. And, like, you know, when it comes to Chuba Hubbard, I I think a fine player, but, I, you know, I'll take some pedigree of a rookie unknown lottery ticket. Again, nothing that I was weighing. Like, I'm not weighing my team's ranking or anything on having Pacheco or this dude, to be completely honest. Well, uh, I guess both. Well- I don't know where y'all would rank that there or think about that though. That, that's to kind of answer Lippy's question about Brooks. There's, yeah, I would say no, no impact on my outlook for me in terms of what happens to Brooks or Pacheco. Yeah, I don't know. I, we've spent we've spent a lot of time on Kern's team. Yeah, um, I. We'll that's see. a deep throw. Oh, he overthrew him. Yeah, um, let's. I guess Y'all are cool with that. I think it's pretty. Yeah. We can, I don't know. We could go to Jonah now. Let's see what has anything else. Timo, do you have your tier list for current, or are you just tier. enjoying the conversation? Um, oh, I figured I was just going to let Kern talk for a little bit until he got tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but lucky for you, no, I mean, you know, let me get him pulled up real quick. Uh, I'll try and make it sweet, short and sweet. Uh, Mm. Bird dogs. Relentless fucking Chris Godwin passes. That's good. We need to feed Fuzzy Chris Fuzzy, Fuzzy Bevo noises from the far. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Baker just looks so confident out there. It's incredible. Imagine paying Deshaun Watson $230 million instead of paying Baker. Look at Sterling Shepard playing football. Good for you, man. Yeah. Bevo loves Sterling Shepard. Oh, yeah. Bevo drafted him for like four straight years when he was with the Giants. <laughs> I think I was always to so trade A&F have... to him. Like, <laughs> Young Ho couldn't have missed that shit last week. Come on. Yeah. That's pretty bad. They're going for a field goal? Yep. Uh, so so yeah, let's uh let's get our last current topics, then we'll move on to Jonah. But uh My only current notes are that he's got uh he's the last ranked third win team as far as the Strength the schedule thing goes so uh, glad that he's you know three and one for his sake, but uh, no part of that is like a fraudulent three and one. Could easily be two and two, but would be the strongest two and two team if that happened. Let's go. So square squarely <laughs> in fourth place as far as metrics are concerned. I'll take you, Bevo. Are oh, y'all want to shit on uh, Joan a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> so jo- Jonah's got a tough... I'll let one of y'all kick it off. Um, I'll, I'll get us going. Jonah's team, obviously it's nice Joe Burrow's been throwing some touchdowns. Um, this, this is just a, a tough squad. Um, I, I don't really want to be mean, but there's just so much that's gone wrong for Jonah. I don't really know where to start. I'd I've got this as a bottom tier team, not for a lack of trying, but due to a lot of pretty terrible luck. I don't, I, I don't know if Pittman is startable, whether Flacco's it or not. It seems like they're going to, if he's going to have a good game, it'll be this week. If my advice to Joe would be to sell him like a stolen car, if uh, he pops off this week, because <laughs> it is, it is not going to get better. It will get worse. Uh, the Colts are an absolute dumpster fire in terms of offensive, you know, 
tools. I, I mean, maybe you try and dilute Kittle into more pieces. I don't know. I, I don't envy your position, Jonah. I feel bad for the luck you've had, but uh, that's about that's about sums up what I feel about it. I, I wish I could have a rosier set of things to say, but that's that's where I'm at right now. It's very interesting. What he, uh, you can see the image he built his team in if CMC was healthy, and it would be a reasonable team if CMC was alive. Yeah, of yeah. course. Problem is, CMC is not going to be back until the end of November, and the season's going to be over for him at that point. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I uh, think I, if neighbors does. What do you, you, you go ahead, Timo? You got it. Hello. What up? Okay. I was just going to say, if Neighbors doesn't play this week, I think Wandell is going to have himself a day. He's already getting like 11 targets a game. It's uh, pretty wild. But it's kind of just a low, high floor, low ceiling type deal. He doesn't really do much with it. Yeah. At the end of the day, Jonah's still dead in the water, but he yeah, is either, he's yeah. going to beat Timo or myself in week 13 or 15, and it's going to really kill the vibes for Timo or myself. I just hope it's Timo yeah. and not me. No offense, Timo. Because <laughs> uh, he's going to have CMC back, and it's going to be in the normal CMC, and he's going to CMC Jefferson. You're just it's going to it's going to really hurt to face his team at that point because you're still going to want to win, and hopefully uh, it doesn't affect me if I lose to him. Wandell's going to fucking go ballistic for 15 targets, 10 catches, 36 yards. Right, <laughs> bread and butter. Hey, but dude loves just catching balls and falling down. Just, just catching balls is not a bad thing, though. Oh, yeah, dude. No, we love catching balls. No, I'm not... Look, I'm yeah, not thrilled I, to face I him agree. this week. I mean, I, I'm looking at some of his matchups. What I do mean, you like, mean you're not thrilled to face him this week? I don't know. I'm kind of thinking about what Timo said about this one. I, I refuse... Shit. I don't like that. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I refuse to listen to how Jerry fucking Judy. exceptional your team is, and they're like, oh, boy, I don't know. Jonah's a real fucking scary squad. <laughs> No, I mean, no. I mean exceptional. I said I was five. No, no. I, I don't. I, I will not listen to this. I'm just looking at the match. It looks listening. like it could no, be. No, it could be a little bit of a trap game. Jerry Judy versus Washington. Michael Pittman with fucking Flacco versus There's Jacksonville. Not fucking trap games. You, Cuba, I'm not Cuba Hubbard this. versus the Doo Doo Browns or fucking Bears. Burrow in a shootout versus Baltimore. I'm you, just saying. You got his. You got his biggest. You got his biggest threat in Justin Jefferson being. Covered by sauce and affected by the fact that he's in London. Like oh, J Jets, that's J Jets would so sauce. Nice. Sauce doesn't travel with the with the receivers though. So J Jets well, would, well, would, well, would, would, so. would turn sauce into fucking creme fresh. I, you would fucking cook his ass. I off. think this is this is worse than just saying Jonas' team sucks. Is saying like <laughs> is saying like is like oh wow yeah, yeah also, his team's ass but boy he really could pull a number on me <laughs> like that's so fucking <laughs> stupid look, just, that's so I'm stupid just, I'm just showing the other side of the coin here I'm just saying there is gonna, no other I'm side of the coin fucking... it's a wall it's a wall with the giant sign plastered on it this team got fucked by fantasy look that's the end of the day stop it all right let's move on <laughs> stop it <laughs> who you got next. <laughs> I've got Hunter and Neil next, <coughs> and um, I've said this already. There, there's a new tier, and it is the Doctor Goon tier. It that is that's Olympus. That is that is where the gods feast on Ambrosia. This team, <laughs> this team, it it's not this, it's not for mortals to look upon. This matchup belongs on CBS at 11 a.m. <laughs> the week before Thanksgiving as, you know, insert SEC team here plays Citadel. Yep. Like, yep. it is yep. a tough week for Neil. That is tough. Uh, I mean, we've we've basically just looked at Hunter's team, and it's like this is, this is arguably one of the best running back cores that we've ever seen. Ever. assembled in apex like the if you look at how he's scoring week to week the consistency the you know it, it you, you don't catch his team on a bad week like that's the that's the thing you this don't have going have for you. the only teams yeah this team this team scores like in the middle of the pack in the league at as a bad week and then every other time it's a top four three you know 
level score for the week. So the only way Hunter loses if he just catches somebody, you know, when they're having their one or two blow up weeks that they get per year, you know, that's his losses. I would, if if we're making an odds to make playoffs here, like not to glaze harder here, but we're talking like minus four hundred to make playoffs. If so if the, everything so the catastrophically was unlucky would have to yeah. happen. There would have to be a massive crack out for Hunter not to make the playoffs. Yeah, that, all of his players would have to go on a vacation together and the plane would crash, is how he doesn't make playoffs. Saquon Barkley to Epstein Island. Like, that level of <laughs> nonsense. But he probably wouldn't get suspended until next season, so even that couldn't stop him. Um, well, the NFL has to let the legal process play out, as right, you know. Right. Um, man. Mayfield almost caught that ball. Um... There really isn't much for us to touch on with Hunter's team. It's a it's a nice the squad. Team's good. The team's good. Yeah, the he's wor- number one. Wor- he's number one on my school rankings. So I'm smashing his burger. Yeah. The the, wor- the worst player on the team is probably Brian Thomas Jr. at wide receiver three, and to say that's the worst player, that's a nice worst player to have. Mm-hmm. Well, what is? Oh no. What's his? Oh, he's not. Oh, that's wow. That's target. Is Jesus. that a question for London? I might have to send out God a message. Damn. I might have to send out good. a message. He's good, Lippy. He's all right. Oh, he's a little shook. We already got our points out of him, though. He could rest up. Um. Um, and then if Jaden doesn't learn how to slide, that's concerning. But he still has Purdy as a backup, so does it really matter? Not really. Yeah. Who is he? So when Saquon's when Saquon's not on by, he's flexing Camara. Yeah. Man. Right. It's so good. Let's let's talk about how we missed as a collective fantasy universe the fact that Jawan Jennings was gonna be worth something. Like you've yes. got like nothing nothing it's against not- Debo, who he also has, but like Debo is just not gonna be the guy that you know you're you're in practice and it's like Debo is doing what you know Ayuk is doing while Ayuk is on a contract holdout. It's that that was Jennings the entire time, yeah. and we all just missed that. That was never a front running thing. That was never a like, hey, you know, in camp, uh, Brock and Juwan were getting breakfast together because you know, Ayuk wasn't there. How did we miss that? How I think Debo, I think Debo gets a little more healthy, and I think he ends up just like he's a wonderful by person right now. I think he's, I think he's gonna. I don't know if this Juwan James shit's going to keep up, but, I mean, I, mean, I he didn't as, play. As, a, as an IUK manager, Bevo, what what do you have to, I mean, I mean, this is getting a little bit off topic, but it's tangentially Jennings. What, I mean, what, what do you, what is your confidence level at IUK going forward throughout the rest of the season? It's, it's dropping quickly, but, like, every part of me is like, hey, like, you, you paid the guy. What is it? Twenty-eight million bucks a year. A lot of money. A lot of money. Like, like they're going to force feed him a couple times. But the reality seems to be that you know, with Debo out, you would say, okay, increased opportunity for both Ayuk and Jennings. But Jennings is getting all of the conversion of those good, juicy targets. Yeah. It's um just quickly about Ayuk. What everyone likes to rag on Garrett Wilson and Drake London and Co for you know not having like the breakout and everyone predicts the breakout for him. I was getting paid 30 million a year, but he only had three, four wide receiver one finishes last year in 16 games. That's not what you want out of a wide receiver one. Like they're paying him. Obviously you didn't draft him to be that for you, Jack, but nonetheless, it kind of feels like that kind of gets brushed under the water. Obviously when you're getting paid 30 million a year, you'd hope he gets force fed some targets at some point. But I mean, yeah, like, you'd you'd like a little couple more blow up weeks. Wow, Mister King Hoot, lovely for him to join us. Oh, what a what a what a lovely appearance here. That's 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 just a oh, cousin Hoot. Here, let me let me share my screen so you can take part in our viewing here. Um, All right, who are we on right now? Y'all want to dog on? Uh, let's, we- let's let's do Neil really quick. Um, all right, real quick, real quick, Neil ranking. Neil, I've got you down at, I have you at dead in the water. It's 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 nothing against you, buddy. I think you're doing great. I think that, uh, <laughs> I think that um, it's just you're in the 
you're in a tough division. You're two games behind A and F and I, and you're about to lose another one. And you just need a lot. Of, you need a lot of healthy players and a lot of things to go right for you. And it's. Um, I just don't know if there'll be enough time for you to catch up and get all that juicy gravy. So I think, uh, you know, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe you'll come over and squat on top A and F and I, and you'll be the division leader and you'll you'll ride into the sunset. But um, I have you dead at number. Shit, no. I have you down. Well, I'm gonna say tied for last because I don't. I don't want to separate those two dead in the water that I have. So, well, that's that's damn decent of you, Kurt. I'm sure that really makes uh, Neil feel great. Uh, thank you I for try. tying him for last. Uh, so, I I think this. I mean, realistically, if I have problems with with Kurt's actual squad, they're just kind of amplified here. Like you've got the reek problem, but even more pronounced with Waddle. You've got. You've got just a, an absolute clusterfuck going on with Indianapolis, which Kern is dealing with as well. Um, you've got a now diluted Rashad White, Bucky Irving situation that we're seeing play out in real time in this game that's going on right now. Um, I love Zay Flowers, but... Uh, Harbaugh made a big deal about they're just gonna they're not they didn't bring Derrick Henry in to give him two hundred carries a game. I think he was actually a liar, and they did bring Derrick Henry in to give him two hundred carries a game. I think Najee is really gross. I don't know. Uh, Pickens is fine, but it's not it's not going to be enough. I I don't know. I I feel bad. A lot of this shit just went real sideways real fast for some of your guys, Neil. But yeah, this this team's gonna have. A really, really, really fucking hard time winning ball games, and it's not. It, gonna, it, it, is you know. Najee actually? I mean, Neil's team had yeah, dead in the water. Is Najee that gross? He is tied with Jacobs for the most touches this year without a touchdown. Obviously, at three a carry, you don't like seeing that, but you'd think it's got to pick up at some point, and that's a Darnell Mooney touchdown. Wow. That was a pretty nasty third and fourteen your version. See, so Najee Harris. <laughs> He's really well with getting lots of carries, but his one flaw is he runs like he has a piano tied to his back. And, and it's, oh, it's, it's, a a it's, upside. it's a serious disadvantage oh. in the NFL. Dustin started Mooney. Wow, poor, poor golly. Who started Mooney? Oh, Dustin. my God. God that's that was funny. a disgusting catch. Is he the wide receiver Dustin one in Atlanta? Get you, dude. <laughs> a- a- after Drake London, he can be. Well, I don't know, man. The wide receiver one in Atlanta more. is Ray Ray McLeod. I mean, when Drake London gets that what was that share of first read targets or looks every single every week, it's it's still Drake London. He threw that to Moody, and he was like triple covered. Yeah, what a what a what a play by Moody. Always always like great. For, always like rooting for him. I mean, maybe he's wide receiver one with that graphic. Too angry. That was a very unique thing where Tampa Bay played all of the corner help behind him. As he was in the end zone, well, it was to cushion his fall. It's all about player safety. Uh, Correct. <laughs> Who says it's not for the defense now? So real, I guess now my next uh, my next team on my list is the Hebrew Hammer, um, sitting at three and one, helped by Jordan Love. Recently acquired, James Conner, Josh Jacobs. Well, Josh Jacobs not recently acquired. Captained by the elite Nico Collins. That's a pretty good team. I like this team a lot. Um, I, th- I, Lippy's made a lot of slash all of the trades at Apex this year. And there have been some where I've been like, huh, I really don't like that. I really think that's actually... Not a great trade for you, Lippy. I don't know about that. But team's looking fine. I I think it's an elite team. I think Nico is having a special season, and I wish I got to be a part of that. I don't. You do. Congratulations. Um, but yeah, I think this team has got some players that are coming back, and like that's where where the trades came in is like you're you're betting on these guys to recover and you're betting on yourself like sitting pretty and then when they come back your team is just going to get elevated to an even higher level so 
we'll see. I think this team has got great pieces, and when those players come back, they turn into elite pieces. So we'll see. Um, I I don't have this team moving at all in my rankings. I'm curious what everyone else thinks. And let me you could obviously jump in and talk about your own team as well. One comment here: Mooney is wide receiver one for Atlanta today because Drake is being uh, evaluated for a concussion. They just reported. Yeah, that's very sad. That is very sad. Sometimes it's bigger than football. Oh, hey, at least you got oh. the touchdown. Yeah, that's true. He he, he doesn't want to go in the tent. <laughs> um, I have Lippy firmly. I have Lippy firmly as number three. He's in my tears. If you could see it, which you can't, I have like gaps in the Excel spreadsheet, and I have a. Uh, I have Lippy snuggled up right next to number two, who's in the elite tier, and then there's a little gap above that person where Goon is. So there's a big gap between number three and number four. So Lippy, you are you are you are. He's not gone. Oh, he should have scored there. Wow. Sorry, Kern. I thought he was going to score. Very good. That was all I was going to say. I fucking hate Chicago internet. I really. Wow. I just can't stand it. It just ruins everything I ever watch that Lippy watches. <laughs> I'm not gonna I, lie, I, NF, I reloaded it, and I'm actually a little bit ahead of Lippy right now. Oh wow, there you go. God. <laughs> I can't even blame the wires having to go further south now. Uh, uh, simple thought about my team: if uh, James Connor was on anyone else's team, I'd be hounding them for him because I think he's just going to be awesome the rest of the year. Uh, I could care less about him splitting snaps with Emmanuel Wilson or Lloyd when he gets back. And on top of that, if Puka does come back healthy, that's just that'd be such a lovely flex to have. And that's really it. I'm very happy with the squad so far. Yeah. I don't think uh, and I'll, I also have my squad in the elite tier uh, at number one ahead of Hunter because I don't like Hunter. Okay. Well. Hell yeah. Completely unbiased. Comple- completely biased. Yes, I agree. That was a nice catch by Otten. Any, uh, it was. Yeah. Anyone have any other comments? On Lippy's team, I think feel like it kind of speaks for itself. There's, I think there's a lot more to say about K Cole's squad if anybody doesn't mind moving on. Well, NF, before we get past this, I do want to. Uh, you mentioned Nico there, but I want to return to a, an off-season conversation we had about the mm-hmm. future Texans receiver to own. Yeah. Well, see, after, <laughs> yeah. after four weeks, if you've changed your tune and come to the Nico well, bandwagon, yeah, I see. I see. It, I see. It runs in the blood. Uh, you see, unfortunately, <laughs> Tankdale was shot this off-season, so uh, very clearly, you know, that's taking its toll. No, I, I think Tank's going to be fine. Uh, I was wrong. Nico's the right receiver to own. It's not close. I think Tank's going to be great. I think him and Diggs are both going to be... I think Tank and Diggs are going to be tough to start on a week-out. Week-out basis is like a you know wide receiver one or wide receiver two. Uh, Nico is... Nico's having a special... Oh, season. not Mike Evans again. Oh, no. Wow. Uh, two tutties already. Oh, no. <laughs> Sean, if, you just me a fair, if you just offered me a fair trade and trying to steal him for a second round, I would have traded him earlier this year, man. I'm trying to I was trying to blow that squad up. So the, the, <laughs> the good thing is that I have him in Gloss Dynasty, um, which is nice. But the uh, but yeah, I mean Nico, Nico is exceptional. I think he's something weird would have to happen for him not to be the wide receiver one. He's so special, and his connection with Stroud is is great. It's, I, I did, did you guys see his, uh, what do you call it, his route tree from this last week? Like the catches that they put for like next-gen stats? Mm-hmm. It was just like he was everywhere. Yeah. Left, flat, right. So like every, it was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It's He is so good. So w- without Joe Mixon, Slowick has been somewhat frustrating in terms of his play calling, with the exception of how Nico is being used. That has remained constantly just beautiful. But, yeah, I mean, Nico is incredible. Luckily, me being wrong on that has led to great times for the Texans. Um, so, Libby, your opponent this week is Keikel, who started this season as a and I think even as of last time was a tier four team for most people and that has quickly changed as he's found two more wins out of the 0-2 into the 
two and two. He's what he's what one of two two and two teams. Uh, so we have kind of a different landscape for K Cole now. I have not adjusted my ranking of K Cole. Dead in the water still. Wow. Yeah, I have not adjusted my rankings of K Cole. Um, that is that sounds. You have this dead in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and after, can you scroll cool. down a little bit so I can see it? Sure, 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 sure. Um, and I'll let I'll let everyone else jump in here, but you know, and you're about to hear King Hoot about how um, you know these other people that have had him tier four for the past two pods have, have now elevated him to whatever. But I think this team is still going to really struggle to win games. I think bye weeks are going to really eat this team al- alive, and uh, I it's it's not for lack of trying. I think. You know, Derrick Henry is, like I was saying earlier, is absolutely lit. Jamar Chase is finally getting to score touchdowns. But um, all of these teams have good players. All of these teams, well, most of them. Um, this is going to be tough to find wins with, and I, I don't think this team is going to do it very often. So um, that's where I am. Excuse me. And uh, I'll let you all take over. But I, I haven't moved this team in my ranking at all. It sounds like y'all have Lippy and Kurt. I think his only, I think his only knock is his wide receiver three. He's gone back to back weeks dropping 120. He's got Derrick Henry who he's going to go for 200 yards this week. I mean, but it's like, yeah, he's going, he's he's going to do terrible things to Cincinnati. And I mean, DeAndre Swift is has has found some traction as of last week and then faces Carolina. Um, Zach Moss, I love fuck down Brown, but I think they're both going to thrive in that offense just rushing the ball to take the pressure off and jamar chase and Diggs and i don't know man i look at his team like he's got deandre hopkins on the bench who's starting to come out and hot what he's gonna come well we're doing back the, and, all right deandre hopkins is coming out from where he's what where's deandre hopkins coming out from is he gonna be the quarterback for the titans no no he's a he's a i mean he had one good week in week three I don't know. He's just he's just somebody. I mean, that's he's what I'm saying. Up. Like, like, why are you changing your rankings <laughs> off a good week of DeAndre Hopkins? What are you saying? You, just, you, you take what I say and you boil it down to such a just just sad, sad dissection. A and F. It is everything else I say and think about my one haphazard DeAndre Hopkins. All right, so comment. so it's not what? just that. It's not just that. Like, so the Diggs comment. Like we were just talking about Texans receivers. Let me finish that up and bring it in here. Um. Like here's the here's the truth. Like, really and truly, you don't want to start Diggs or Tank Dell. When Tank is in the, going to be in the game, the answer is it's going to be really hard to start either of them with any confidence. And I I love I love the Texans doing well. I lo- I I want them each to score two thousand touchdowns apiece. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. And Diggs, you haven't been like, dead in the water. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Like he's got, oh, he's got, he's got, it's, he's got Henry, Henry and Jamar are like the players I'm scared of on this team, and that's it. I'm not scared of any other players on this team. Who are you scared and, but of? That, but that, but that's the issue. Uh, I'm terrified of Derrick Henry this week. He's going to put up twenty plus carries for 150 yards and probably two touchdowns. He's going to put up a thirty burger. Uh, but I will say, current. Only issue I have with that analysis, he is uh, in the hunt because he is two and two, and I feel like he can win games. Zach Moss might be in trouble. Uh, they're they're, just, down they're down in a pure committee there, and <laughs> the problem is the other half of the committee looks better than Zach Moss. Oh, oh don't say it. Uh, it <sighs> fuck down Brown looks better. It's simple as that. Oh, <laughs> oh God. I fucking hate okay. you, Kurt. But, like, <laughs> like who. Uh, okay. I, I just I just don't I don't understand why we're Fucking why we're God. elevating this team more than, that more, than, more than we have any reason to. <laughs> um, Maybe yeah. I was just really jacked up when I read it. What Pitts again? Know, Pitts is getting so many targets. Was this? And my what'd you say? No, what was the question? Oh, Team uh, K Cole. What do you think about it? <laughs> oh, this team? Yeah. I mean, I think the bench is weak. I, I don't know what y'all's tier like. It, what, what are y'all's three tiers you're doing here in so, contenders? So we've we've got elite, contender, 
in the hunt and dead in the water. I mean, so my I think ANF really nailed it when he first did the walkthrough, which is like this is a good enough team to start, but bye weeks are going to crush this team. Like the depth scares the shit out of me. If you're hoping for a committee of what Downs or D Hop or Cooks when he gets back, I mean, it's just like there's no wide receiver three here. Um. I would be trying to trade. I know it may seem blasphemous, but like I think this is like a trade Mahomes or trade Derrick Henry. I, I, you can't trade Derrick Henry right now, but like trade Mahomes for more pieces. I'm also I might be the last dude who's like a not believer, but I'm still a non believer in Swift. Like I don't yeah. I think one big touchdown run does not make a quality RB two. Um, exactly. So I'm I, I don't know if I call it dead in the water, but I certainly compared to the last two teams I looked at. Uh, would not nearly be like I think there's there's a lot of concerns for this team. Appreciate yeah. that, Mister Hoot. Uh, the problem I is he plays to. Carolina this week, and he's going to look great against them. Why does Keiko no, still, still have Dalvin to, on his? <laughs> that, that, that's Dalvin, the issue. Keiko's not going to make any moves. He never does. And I think yeah, Dalvin's like, be a sneaky, sneaky good guy. Well, Flacco's the quarterback. Like as long as Flacco's exactly. the quarterback, I think Downs is going to be a a a. a target merchant and going to get you some quality points. I just, again, worry about bye weeks for this team and worry about the long, like, what are its legs in the long run? Yeah, if he's somehow still around by week 14, he's... Dude, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Well, I think y'all... Maybe I got too excited about the Derrick Henry and Jamar Chase stack. I don't know. Derrick Henry's scary as shit, dude. That motherfucker might have my my, my take is not Derrick Henry is bad. That's not what I'm trying no, no, to say. Like I just, it's just one of those things where you might just have Derrick Henry and like, I mean, like, what are you going to do when he drops fucking 200 yards on you? The problem with Derrick Henry as like, again, I, I'm a huge Derrick Henry guy. I love it. But the thing with Derrick Henry versus like last year's Christian McCaffrey is you're not going to get those 15 reception games or 10 reception. You're not going to get like right. the big, big, crazy yeah. scores where he wins it by himself. You're kind of hoping the only way you get there is with like a four touchdown game, which he might get. He might have a he might have a crazy touchdown game, but like, I, I it's like he's more of a he's going to be twenties to thirties for you, and that's a great thing to have. But I just I don't know if it's enough to carry a roster that has not enough depth. Yeah, let's let's uh, I've got Tebow with us. Let's let's move on to his team sitting at three and one. Oh Jesus! Uh, important so game far. between. Two people on the pod. We've got Tebow and Jack playing against each other this week. Uh, Tebow, as of last week, was a elite tier team for me. That has not changed. Obviously, the Rasheed Rice injury is really tough. It hurts, but I'm sticking with this team. Um, tough running back situation this week. We don't know. I, it doesn't look like Mixon is going to play. Um, and Brian Robinson is a late injury report ad. So, just looking at this team as a whole, not, um, you know, obviously, there, there's, I, I don't know, I, I really like this team, Timo. Um, you've got Laporte on by this week, but again, I'm not I'm not just talking about this week. My my rankings have never been about just a singular week. I know, I know some people like Curran, one week really matters. That's why uh, Swift is now the best RB in the league. Um, but, yeah, I... I I, I haven't changed my ranking of this team at all. I think while we had one good week from the stack, you've been a little bit stack deprived, and that's only going to get better for you going forward. I think you're going to have a lot more good weeks with Arizona. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have much more to say about this team. Anyone got anything? Opponent Jack? Any? Uh, any yeah. Opponent? Who am I? Who am I getting? Who am I getting at uh, flex this week? Timo, is it going to be Javante Williams, or are you just going to ride the train and see if Brian Robinson plays? Singletary might not play. You could put in Tracy. Um, could be a good move. But, uh... He was my... He was he was the first overall squad. The the Rice injury, obviously, you know, that that's a huge yeah. cannon shot. But, I mean... There's some fuckery going around right now. I mean, maybe so. Like, oh, apparently, what? Yeah. Like, his, his knees really swollen, so like they like can't do the physical test to see if 
that's hanging off. But, so, but there's people who say that's just totally not true. Yeah, that you can like still see if an ACL is torn. Yeah, I right. feel like you like you should be able to tell like at this point. But like, who yeah, fucking knows? Yeah. But no one feels no like he's going to be back or... in December or late November at this point. Who Even knows? So, who gives Realistically, because you know, Timo's got Jaden Reed who's balling the fuck out now, and he's got fucking yeah. He basically has Jaden Reed and Cooper Cup's going to come back too. So like, who gives a shit? So That's what I'm you're saying. still like long term. This team is fine. Yeah, you're you're a little bit behind Goon because Goon has to be on Mount Olympus by himself. Exactly. But you're, you're oh, dude, yeah, no, totally agree with that. <laughs> but you're alone in the elite tier side of that because I have Goon up there. So that's it. Yeah, it's uh, it's tanks flood in the next few weeks. But if we can get Mixon healthy and we can get Mix, Mixon will play next week. Mixon will play next week. They're gonna not play him this week, and then he's gonna play. That's a that's a certified Houston insider right there. Um. <laughs> It's a shame too because I feel like he would pop the fuck off this week, but uh, but yeah, you'll have a mixed week. Uh, that Brian Robinson pick was just lovely. It really was. It's 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 it's, it's still a good squad. The Tyrone Tracy wild card at the bottom. Honestly, the Manuel Wilson, the right, the yep. Kendry Miller. It's a it's, good it's team. a bunch of it's it's a bunch of nice wild card. It's it's how you like to build your bench because all and he still has Javante to back it up if he needs to just throw someone in this week. It, it it's it's an elite team at the end of the day. And then the Kyler Marvin Marv stack is just nice. Oh, Tyler Algier catches, dude! Look at this shit. <laughs> at least Drake London's alive. That's all that really matters. Um, well, we'll move now to a team that I had moved up from tier four into tier two, along with Golly. Um, <laughs> we have Bevo Brisket, who's oh. live at five with us in the call. Oh wait, that's not Bevo's team. Excuse me. This is Bevo's team. Um, tough Thursday night football so far, but there's a lot of games. He's currently there. building both Atlanta. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that. That's that's yeah. That's how she blows. Well, what's going on with Bijan? Like, are are they just Arthur Smith in it 2.0, or like uh, is Bijan what's going on with What's Atlanta? going on? <laughs> Low key out here is a better zone runner, and it's just like tough. Damn, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, dude, he has looked dude, great. Dude, <laughs> like well, Al- the, the, I mean, the, the by far the best they looked as an offense last week against the Saints was when Algier was running wide zone. The best they've looked this yeah. week in the running game is Algier running wide zones. Like he just that's better for the offense that they're running right now, which is crazy. You guys, I mean, I mean, with the London first touchdown, that was their first offensive touchdown on like 13, 14 drives. Yeah, that's, that's even that's even worse. That is not right. a good stat for just the vibes on the off. It's just the offense isn't fully clicking. The amount of third downs they've converted, I think, was ten going into this game in four weeks. They converted ten third downs. It's Fuck not. The they it's they they, they like need big overpay. They really need to uh, get the offense kind of in a groove, and it hasn't happened yet. It seems like. Yeah, uh, that be John will probably be okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little surprised you put both of them in, but I get it. There's a lot of upside with Bijan, and then Algiers look great. Yeah, uh, his, his mind's I don't he's have any other options. Yeah, the problem, gonna, yeah, like he's, 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 he's got Marty on five. He wants to start using his phone. So, oh, so, man. so I, I will say one of the things I loved about. Bifo's team last pod was that you got Garrett Wilson off your team. And then this pod, Garrett Wilson is back on your team. I talked to Lippy about this. I have gone back and forth. Actually, I haven't. I haven't gone back and forth. I just hate Garrett Wilson. And it's how he got him back. It's the same trade he made before, basically. It was like a bold, like, so Hoot and Timo... Well, you already know. But, like, so, Chris Olave for fucking... What was it? Was Chris Olave just straight up for him? Yeah, this, so the most recent trade, trade yeah. was Olave oh. for Garrett Wilson. And Damn. the trade previously... He essentially got, he got Tyler Algier and Terry McLaurin for free. Is what happened. Yeah, I take that 100 out of 100 times. So we call him business. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take Algier and McLaurin, and McLaurin for free. I would have... Probably kept a lobby over Wilson myself. I know I'm the outsider here, so like I don't I don't know what the things are, but I, agree. I actually really I actually really like this team. Uh, I'm if if Bevo, if you can go back to or yeah, yeah if you can go back to it. 
I mean, Ayuk has not... I'm a huge Ayuk guy, and he is having a horrible start to the season. But I think Loki, even if he continues to bum out for a bit, Myers is about to be a target hog oh, as soon as they trade. Yeah. yeah, as soon as they, as soon as the wherever wherever that trade ends up, I I truly do still believe in the talent of Ayuk and the vibes over there. Eventually, I think we'll get better. Oh, oh she's gone. gone. There he's gone. Gone. No, oh, I mean, oh, he's so he's slow. slow. Oh, he's so slow he's and shitty. So oh, so not good. Good. This is the longest run ever. He's, oh, he's not so good. slow and shitty. God. Yeah, that is legitimately <laughs> his longest run in the NFL. <laughs> Talk about running with a fucking piano on your back. My God, look at that shit. Fuck you, everyone. I would have fucking scored. <laughs> But yeah, just to, just to just to finish up my thoughts of the game, team, like, I, I really like McLaurin. I I really like this receiving core. I think it's got good depth at the receiving core. Like, there's a lot of dudes who I I think are fine with part, like bye week spot starts. When Joku comes back, I like the tight end. Like I, again, I, I haven't seen every team in this week, so I don't know if it's elite, but I certainly I, I like this team. The only knock on his team is his running back depth. I mean, that's that's the only no. He's got like awesome. My- there's CJ Strauss and Paul Schultz is what is happens happening? to be an asshole as well, but yeah, he's he's got the Atlanta backfield, and I mean, I guess that's about it. So you know, it's a uh, but I'm he's a shit. You can you can be flexible. Dude, this is the next thing I do. Yeah, yeah so Monty, Monty stays underrated, dude. Monty's just a game. There's Monty just every week just gets Monty's you. Really prime. Monty's really prime. I, I'm just saying, like he's got two running <laughs> backs, which is. You know, yeah. with bye weeks, that'll suck, but you have enough depth at wide receiver to keep you floating. And he yeah, can always Atlanta, come knock on the door. He can always knock on the door and come see old Shaw and get fucked down Brown, and we'll you know talk some business. God, Rashad White just get just pummeled. Uh, this isn't your fucking. Just got, that, that was Bucky. Bucky. You know, that was Bucky. Piece of heavy equipment. That was Bucky. Damn, Bucky, you got to be better than that. You got fucking. It's about to be Mike Evans touchdown number three. Any thoughts on that, Alexander? Ooh, I mean, tough, I already bro. spoke it into existence by God talking shit about Monster, you know? Three uh, touchdowns and a half. <laughs> tough. I mean, Bevo so, just uh, wants one Godwin, Tutty. But Bevo, I have you one spot behind me, very close. We're like, we're like snuggling on each other in the, in the contender tier. I mean, that's fair analysis. I think, like, I'll, I'll say it, like, if you were to give me someone else's, like, poor injury luck, this would be, like, if I had Jonah's injury luck, it would be a worse team than what Jonah has. So, like, I will I will acknowledge that, like, it's not a team that was well set up at the start to, like, weather a lot of depth things, but now it is coming to form, and I, I hit on a couple guys where it's, like, you're getting a lot of target volume um, opportunities, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, that's reversed and gone positively. I will say that, like, my assessment of my team is, like, squarely in, like, the 6th, 7th place range and just, you know, something something else has to break my way in order for me to break into the top, like, 4-ish or, like, being near playoffs. And the only thing that I can think of is that, you know, currently my division mates are, you know, decent, but I have the benefit of getting to play probably one of the easier schedules in the league. And so that just translates to more winning opportunity and the opportunity to be there, like, at the end of the day, close to the top. This, these, this is a big week for you and K. Cole. But if you and K. Cole can pull out wins versus me and Timo, it brings you guys tied with us and just it really muddies the waters of the standings, at least, whether you yeah, think I'm, one team is better than, than the other. If you can just beat Timo this week, you have a, you absolutely have a chance. I'm definitely but rooting just, for you and K. Cole. Hope you guys go fucking crazy. Because uh, Hunter's probably winning this week. If Timo and I win, that just kind of separates the pack for the top three teams, the hypothetical top three teams. But if you all win, it just it muddies those waters. So we'll see what happens. Kyle Pitts already has 7.3 points. This is a locked dub, ladies and gentlemen. That's an elite week. Um... Let's that right before third down with the Bucks in the red zone and Mike Evans existing. Guaranteed dub, it's fourth, baby. It's fourth down now. Um, so let's let's move on to Dustin's. Wait, that's not Dustin's team. There's this. You know, excuse me. Um, pardon me. This Dustin's team. Um, so this is team one and three. He's been tier four. For I think everybody, for every time we've ever done this, um, 
Josh Allen's still great. Kyron's still great. C.D. Lamb is... C.D. Lamb. Then it gets a little bit tougher. Um, I have not adjusted my ranking of this team. I think, Dustin, I, I think it's just been kind of a hard season, and I think it's going to keep on being a hard season. I don't know if you'll win this week. Obviously, Moody's off to a, a nice start today. But... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a whole lot to say because I've already said it before. Uh, but I haven't adjusted my ranking of this team. I'm curious if anyone else has any thoughts. I mean, I guess the Dontavian Wicks pick is is really starting to look better and nice. But I not enough to move the needle for me. I'm curious as to what y'all think. I'll, again, as the outside voice, I'll come in. Actually, scroll down a little bit again and see that bench one more time because I think he has Parker, right? Yeah. I mean, the running back depth is a, is a little scary, but I actually really like Pollard. If if Dell, so wait a minute, come to this, this circles back to Texans wide receivers again. Like yeah. if yeah. if you're down on Dell and think he's not somebody you can trust week to week, then yeah, I see what you're saying. But like if Dell returns to form and has a good second half of the season, I mean, it's going to be a lot better than it has been. <laughs> It's going to be a lot better yeah. than it has been. Uh, but. So, like, Pollard and Dell, you throw into this starting roster. I think Dontavian Wicks is going to be a, is, is good. Like, you throw... I don't know. It's not... Again, I haven't seen every team in this league, but it's not It's not terrible. I mean... Oh, it is third down. I'm sorry. I was wrong, Jeff. The the, the running back the depth is tough, but, uh, yeah. I, I kind of I like... I, I didn't see oh, it. Three past. times? Is that him again? No, it's not. No. <laughs> Poor uh, is that Sterling Shepard? That's Sterling Shepard. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought he was dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> he might still be on the Giants payroll office space style. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Kern, Lippy Jack, team, y'all, y'all have any thoughts on this team? Oh, I got a quick question yet. It's totally outside of this. Is anyone brave enough to be start? Is, like, is anyone starting Baker? Uh, that would be Golly, and I don't think I think Golly has a quarterback right now. Like I've got, I've got Baker on my bench in a couple of leagues, and I just every week I'm like, I I oh, look at it, I go, don't have the balls to do it. Golly, starting in the superflex league, I'm kind of enjoying it. That's about. I it. mean, I, I have Baker and Degen, and I absolutely love every second of it. <laughs> Craziness. I mean, what is, what is he? Is the, the quarterback three? Yeah. And you pay it's... fucking you pay fucking Watson seven billion dollars, and Baker <laughs> just giga chatting it up. Man. No, if you look at the teams, it, it's it's fucking the the Browns and somehow the Panthers are both. Yeah, yeah, with Andy Dalton. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Um, I like Dustin's team a little bit. Like I like the depth. I I missed on Tavian Wicks. Um, yeah, I mean he's um he can come out of this bottom tier for sure because he's got Josh Allen, who's just a fucking cheat code, but. Yeah. So, Kern, that's my issue, though, with the tiers. When we say dead in the water, that to me means I think they have no chance of making the playoffs. And every one in three team in our league has no chance of making the playoffs. Yeah. So, he's dead in the water for that reason. Only two games Is, can he, right now? You think so? I, it's, it's irrelevant. Can he make noise? Sure, but he's not going to win enough games with that team. Yeah. He can only He can only lose two more games this year to make playoffs, probably. Max three. Oh, you man. think that team is, you think he's going to win pretty much only lose three more games at the most? I don't think so. I don't know. It is wild. For my context, have you already have you already gone over this like team one and two like this these elite couple of teams? Did I miss those? I just wanted um, to see so like this, what so this I, is. A, this I'll show you the the what our consensus Mount Olympus team is right now. Um, oh well, yeah. Holy shit! Okay. And so he's also well, um, got Saquon on by, um, Devontae yeah. on IR. Um, okay, scroll back up. So Devontae and Saquon are the real plus Purdy. But Devontae, Sa- yeah, fuck. Okay, yeah, this team fucks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, this team fucks hard. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. I, again, I, this helps with the context. The first team I came in on, I was like, it's good, but it wasn't. A, it's, so yeah, okay. This uh, team fucks hard. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So let's let's real quick let's do golly. He's our last team, and then we can kind of just get into general NFL discussion. 
golly, reigning champ. I dubbed him a tier two team last pod. He has made it hard for me to stand with him at tier two, and I think I might. <laughs> I might. <laughs> fuck it. It's my ranking. I can do what I want. He's tier two still for me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Uh, Angry I'm, and flex I'm, 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 I'm standing so with you at tier fucking three or tier two. Um, I believe Dude, he does golly. have everybody on by this week, though. In his defense, yeah, it's not as so, bad as it was. So hopefully, <laughs> but I mean, he's about to be without neighbors. Does he have another? He, oh, McLeod would have been the replacement. So AJ wow. Brown out. He's gonna have to draft, drop McLaughlin. He's got Hurts out. He's got Gibbs out. He's got Jabo out. He's got to drop McLaughlin after the F to get a replacement for um, neighbors. When did he pick him up? I dropped him. I didn't know anyone was was interested. I feel like Golly. See, here's the thing. Golly's really smart. Golly and I, we understand the free agent market. Golly, he he's a great manager. He's a great manager. Um, I I don't give a fuck. I'm keeping him at tier two. I think this team. This you you you're talking about a team that's going to be a Cinderella story. I'll, I'll bet on the back to back rating champ. A and if he has three losses and he has four more games total against two against me and two against Timo, how is he not going to get six losses? I think you all have to be prepared. I think you have to be prepared. Be prepared for the back to back rating champ. Is who you got to be prepared for. Um, I'm, I'm sticking with him, baby. I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, he's the highest. He's the highest I have on in the hunt. There's, he's not in any hunt. <laughs> oh god! I think he's in the hunt. Boy, All right, boys. Well, I'm gonna dip out. I gotta go do some dishes and do the many things. But I will talk to y'all later. All right. Curry is out. That's where I'm leaving off. That about Jihad is on on the knock on the door. He's in the hunt. Um. So I guess just we can transition now into just general NFL talk um, and fantasy talk as a whole, um, and we've we've gone over a little bit of this. My goodness, Kirk had a lot of time there. Oh, look at Bijan go. Okay, I'm I'm still a little bit behind you guys. I haven't refreshed because I've had all this pod shit going. Um, I guess so. We're we're four weeks into the season, starting on five. Is is there any? player or players slash teams that you think have been under or overperforming that are due to swing the other way? Like, is there a pendulum that you think is about to clock the other direction? Um, the New England Patriots, when they get Drake May in the game, they're going to be awesome. Now, you of, course, you, of course, mean that he will, of course, be exited by exquisite Ramondre play, correct? I, I think the offense will be very watchable and actually fun to watch. With what, Polk, with Baker, and all of them. I, it it could actually buy? be a mixed offense. Not Coming for, up, I not, think. No, it's not. It's week 14. Uh, oh, that's not good. That's the same as the Texans. I mean... I thought Drake May looked pretty good when he got the little bullshit couple of drives in with the Jets. I thought he, oh, looked, gonna be hot he looked okay. Um, so I always, I, I mean, I don't know. I was big on May and like rookie scouting. So I would, I would definitely agree with you there. Um, oh, Antonio Gibson, RB one. No, no. No, no, no. This, this is a, this is a Ramondre Stevenson podcast. Uh, we'll hear none of that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not me. It's the coach. No, no. Gerard Mayo, he's a jokester. He likes to play little jokes and pranks. Um, but, yeah, we're uh, this is a Ramondre proud pod. But, you know, I... I would say a team that has really surprised me, and I was I was talking to Lippy about this earlier. the The Bears suck. The Bears the Bears are real bad. Uh, I think Caleb looks awful. I Ken Waldron is ass. Yeah, he's yeah, a, he's a football Walter terrorist. Um, I don't because like look at just from a long term perspective like what are they going to fire him after this year and start completely over for Caleb's second yeah, year Yeah, I mean you got to, right? 
<laughs> Wal- Waldron just sucks. But, but Ca- yeah. Caleb isn't as bad as we're making it sound. He's a- he's not terrible. Dude, he looks he's so just, fucking bad. The it's it's, just, it's, just, it's looks- just when you look at Jaden with his 80% completion no, percentage and how no, awesome not. they look. No, it's not. I, I watched every snap of the Bears-Texans game. That guy, obviously he was very athletic. Um, and he was pretty good at getting out of some really tight spots. But man, every time he threw down the field, it was horrific. It was horrific. And I, I haven't I haven't watched too much more of Caleb, but like other than just like the highlights that I see and most of the time it's him looking terrible. Um I've been so unimpressed. I'm curious if it like Libby, like why do you say like are, are you are you actually a believer in Caleb? I, I don't know. I think he's got a ton well, of work it, to it's do. it's not more so being a believer, it's the fact he and I feel it's a Waldron problem. So everything all the talk you hear about how Jaden has these and it's what Bebo said. Bebo was saying without Eckler, Jaden's not gonna have these dump offs and get these easy yards, which then make his life easier because they're converting these first downs. I mean, Caleb's got one of the f- deepest t- uh, depth of targets, whatever the word is. He's throwing more downfield more than any other quarterback. He's one of the top five in the league in that. And just his, like, difficulty he's working with is shitty. Waldron sucks. Like, we were talking, I was talking about Nico's, like, route tr- uh, tree and everything with all his catches on next-gen stats. DJ Moore's is disgusting. It looks like Nico's when he was a rookie. Yeah, just run straight, and, run straight and try and get open. It makes no sense. It looks. It looks like. It actually looks like his DK Metcalf from last year. That's a great call out. It's I was going to say. It, it, you it, look it, at JSN's route trees last year. It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. J- exactly. J- it's it's so bad. And at the end of the day, it's a rookie quarterback, and you can see how bad they look with Bo Nix, where it's Did the Mike offense Evans is literally unwatchable. What happened? Did Mike Evans just go into the locker room? I mean, two seconds left. They're about to kneel, sir. Well, no. Uh, I mean, like. He, it was before the the first deal. Uh, oh, 12 seconds. Yeah. Who knows? Um, it's just it's a Waldron problem, and you can see how bad a rookie quarterback can look. And he doesn't look he doesn't look like he's a total bust. I mean, but we we were talking about this we were talking about this earlier. And, yes, and, he has the most talent, and all of a sudden there's all these excuses. Yes, right, exactly. Like it's like I understand. I I just I'm very curious as to like. I, I obviously won't. We'll know. We'll know at the end of the season what the Bears decide to do. But what do what do you say about Caleb and his in his receiving options next year if Waldron's still there? Uh, that'd be depressing. But I would I wouldn't say Caleb's a bust. Okay. I would say I'm not going to have high expectations for those guys. But I'm not going to say Caleb's a bust, and I think he's not good. Okay. I think Bo Nick yeah. isn't good. Yeah. I don't think Caleb isn't good. I, I think we, Caleb's we, we call this. Guy. We call this the Pete Carmichael effect. It's just if you <laughs> it, now, what I think is more impressive is that when it, it, I think it shows just how good Jane Daniels might be yep. that he's doing this with Cliff, who I think is this the exact same type of coordinator. <laughs> so if you want to draw that comparable to be like, that's fair. Some dudes can lift above it. Some dudes maybe not. That I think is a fair like question, but I, I do think we are way, way, way ahead of. Caleb Williams doesn't look good. Caleb Williams looks fine for a rookie. Like he really does. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with how he's playing. He looks like he looks like somebody who's adjusting to the speed of the game, but has the athleticism and has the poise to eventually get there. Like I'm not worried about that. I think it's more. It just again, like you're saying, it. We have two years of C.J. Stroud looking so fucking good, and this year, I mean, Jane Daniels looking like the greatest quarterback of all time. Which again, that will come back to earth a little bit, but. It's that's what's throwing this into such stark relief. I feel like, dude, I I don't know, man. Um, I was telling me this, and like, so, so two things. One, one, I'm going to start with this. One, I completely agree with like all of the talk, like you know Brady and all the other motherfuckers that have been saying like quarterbacks don't get enough time. It's hard as piss to be a quarterback in the NFL. They're starting too soon. They're not getting enough time to actually learn. I agree with all that. Bottom line is, this is the situation we're in. So, 
you know, you think about, and obviously the situations are different. Lippy and I talked about this too. The situations are different. There's lots of differences, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of differences. But, you know, every excuse in the book was made for Bryce last year. And at the start of this, we were also like, okay, well, it's just the Panthers blow. It's like really hard for Bryce Young. Well, well, now we've completely flipped on all of that. And Bryce is a turd burglar. So I'm wondering, like, what has to happen and at, at what point the, the switch gets flipped on, well, I, actually, Caleb's not so good. Actually, we might have got this a little bit wrong. Like, where is the inflection point for someone who has unbelievable, like a great defense keeping them in games with excellent receiving options, including like the, what, the third highest paid tight end in football uh, and Cole Komet. So I'm, I'm just wondering, like, yeah, like, do, do, do you get what I'm saying? Like, we, we obviously there's lots it, of time, there's like, lots of time to grow. There's lots of time to learn. And maybe that's a good thing for him to grow and learn. But I mean, I'm just telling you from what I saw, dude looks like he sucks. And he looks like he's a scrambler, but not as good of a scrambler as Jaden Daniels or the other athletic quarterbacks in the league. I like, I've just been very unimpressed from what I've seen. And I'm like, what's going to change that? I don't think Shane Waldron actually gets fired. I don't know. And, and then if he does, what if the next guy that comes in is like the wrong system for him? Like, just like Frank Reich left. And then he was the, like, oh, well, it, it's just because Frank Reich left. He needed to learn a new system. So like the chain of excuses is just going to keep going. So I'm, I'm wondering, other than him just showing up and playing better, where the end of that trade is. Well, so uh, I think comparing him to Bryce isn't really fair. I think he has so many, he's got so much more talent than Bryce. Like Bryce was a terrible pick in my opinion. Like I don't think Bryce was ever the guy for anybody. Um, and I think it like putting Dalton in just proves that because Dalton's not this world beater. Dalton's well, like a average to below average quarterback Isn't that's he making them eight years like, old too. Yeah. Right, right. Like we're we're seeing that the offense itself can produce. It can be capable even with like subpar to average quarterback play. Bryce is just not the guy. Right. Caleb, I think from what I've seen, I haven't watched it more than just red zone, but like it just seems like he's overthrowing the shit out of everybody when it comes time to throw the ball. Yep. His offensive line's not really doing him any favors. The old line is um, bad. The old line is bad, but. Like like King Hoot said, I think a lot of that is like you can see if he just gets a little more accurate, if the game slows down for him just a little bit more, he's going to connect on some of those bombs, and I think it's going to change people's minds. Now, I'm a little skeptical on that, but I do believe that like if they lose out, like they just have a subpar season, I think that whole coaching staff's gone. Yeah, I mean, but and, and then... We're left with, oh, well, he's got to learn a whole new system now. And you hear about quarterbacks all the time, though. They've got to learn a new system every single year. And, I, and I'm and i not trying to harp on this so much because it's, it's really not that big of a deal. I don't really give a fuck about the Bears. But it just, it just really makes me wonder what gets this train on the right track and how long that's going to take and how many, like, variables are involved in that. So I don't know. Um, another thing. Yeah, I mean, I agree with it's you. Gonna be, it's going to be it's going to be going to be three games in the next season when Ben Johnson's coaching him to look like a monster. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be something like Kubiak gets promoted or something, and he's going to end up having this renaissance in a second year. Um, you know, I, I think what King Hoot said is perfectly like on par. Like we've seen Stroud do it for a season, and we think that a lot of these quarterbacks should just immediately hop in and be good enough. And like, I think... Like Jaden Daniels. Right, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jaden, I really do think, like, in the next few weeks, he's going to come back down to earth. Um, it, it's just... It's been the same thing with Darnold. Like, they're so hyper-efficient right now, it's almost impossible for it to stay where it's at. Like... I think I heard Darnold's at like 10% of his passes or touchdowns in the league average is like five and that's a league quarterback. So at some point it's got to come back down. Yeah. But 
I also think it's not going to be this bad all year for Caleb. I think he will improve. Now, the offense still might suck, but I think, again, that's having a subpar O-line and uh, 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 OC who just likes to run straight down the field. Like, and, you know. And, and that's, that's another thing that I just think as an NFL fact as a whole is, you know what's like just – Seemingly, and I think it's because it's so hard because the defensive play is getting so good, and it's it's very hard for offensive linemen. Uh, even harder this year with all of the bullshit penalties, the Texans putting on a absolute display of how to maximize the yellow flags on the field. Um, but O line play is terrible. It's awful. It's so hard to have a good offensive line, and like. How many teams yeah. can say like, oh, well, it we, the O line just hasn't been up to snuff? Well, it well, I, it's it, almost like the preseason is what's needed to help these offensive line gel by the time the season starts. Crazy concept, I know, but like, yeah. I don't know, man. I think that's why scoring's been down the first four or five weeks this year and last year, ever since the collective bargaining agreement. Like, it yeah. just the same I, thing with these quarterbacks and getting on rhythm with the receivers. Your offensive line needs time to gel and become a unit. Oh, they're, they're putting Matt Ryan in the ring of honor alongside the owner. That's nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I did try to hyper fixate on Caleb, but I just, I think it's an interesting conversation point and we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah. Wait, but, real um, quick. Uh, Anna, as, you, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say in terms of like a player that it's time to make or break for, um, I really do think, like, Garrett Wilson will be better, but I think there's time, like, if he doesn't Ooh. produce this game, there's some tough conversations Ooh. that need to be had about if he's really legit, like everybody thinks he is. Um, You know, he's put up, what, like, wide receiver three, wide receiver four numbers for three years now, and everybody blamed that on a quarterback, and now we've got Aaron Rodgers, and Jeez. he's still putting up, like, wide receiver three and wide receiver four numbers, so... You know, uh, what are we talking about here? <laughs> he's, all, he's also about to get fucking dirty cucked by Devonta Adams. That so. is absolute facts. That <laughs> right, is absolutely right. facts. I mean, it is. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, I completely agree. I, that's. I went on a little rant after the draft on the pod, and I, I, I was a little bit unhinged when I talked about how much I hated Bevo's pick of Garrett Wilson. Uh, just of like what what justifies this guy's draft price and we still haven't seen it and we're not going to see it and it's going to get worse when Devonte gets there and this is all gonna we're gonna look back and this is gonna be some fever dream that everybody is gonna say huh i really wonder why we did this for so long with garrett wilson for no good reason has anyone said uh Derek Devontae Adams to the Ravens yet? That'd I know, be fun. We, we were the just, Ravens. I've heard it. We we were just discussing uh, Garrett Wilson being uh, a huge disappointment burger. He just might not be an alpha, sadly. No, right. And I think so. Like the other side of having Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback, yes, he's extremely accurate. He's also going to run the slowest offense every year that he's a quarterback. Like, it's just what he does. They're going to be low on plays every game, and that doesn't really... If he is trying to make a case to be alpha, he's either got to be hyper-targeted or they got to get the amount of plays up. And it's just not going to happen with A-Rod. So, I I get... Even at 40, he's still looking like a pretty decent quarterback. I just don't... I have a hard time seeing Garrett getting to, a, like, top 12 by the end of the season. Now I can hey. say that, and then they come out at eight thirty on Sunday morning and just blow me away. But I don't. Problem is, happening. I don't. I don't know if I care what happens on Sunday. I don't think he's even. What if? What if top he's? 15. What if he's part of the trade for Devonte? There's no Ooh. chance he's part of the trade. What a wild world would that be? Can In year three, that? there's no chance he would be a part of what a trade if, with Devontae. They would keep... Garrett, we love you, but we like this aging receiver. What if the more. Jets? <laughs> what if the Jets got a pick with the trade? What if they just completely not what anybody's thinking? Uh, what I think it will be it, it, at the end. I mean, that'd be very that'd be a big shock. 
Yeah. Considering what just the aging veterans have been going for in the handful of recent years. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I agree. I don't think that's going to happen. It would be fucking fascinating if it did, though. Uh, um, I will say, do you guys, do you know what the compensation was that the Packers got for Devontae Adams, sir? Mm-hmm. Uh, Quay, Quay Walker, who sucks, uh, Christian Watson, and we gave them Devontae in a second. Aren't the Raiders asking for a second for Devontae? Plus Correct, yeah. Six, or either a second and capital or a second and a player? That's what the rumors are, yeah, so that's probably definitely yeah. what they're asking. Well, he, yeah. he basically... Well, I mean, they, this kind of happened with Rodgers, too. He, they basically just said, yeah, we're, we're done with Green Bay. We, you, we're out. Um, and kind of fucked up y'all's... But even though the, the Rodgers trade worked out lovely for y'all, I mean... I don't think anyone's... Just no matter who the quarterback is, trading a 39, 38-year-old quarterback in the NFL, I don't think any team's going to be sad about that. Remember Matt Ryan went to the Colts for a third-round pick or whatever it was? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think the Falcons care about that one year, two years that the Colts had Matt Ryan for? Not one bit. Well, no, he's, he just got inducted yeah. to their ring of honor. Good for good for Mr. Ice. I know it's a little different, but do you think the Vikings actually care that Kirk Cousins is playing for ATL right now? Like, not Especially the way he's looked the no. past four or five weeks now. Uh, this week, he's looking better, but he's looked rough. Yeah, I, I think the the Garrett Wilson thing is really interesting. Um, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. I've always, I've always just been a hater, and I, I, I think that colors my testimony quite a bit on what I think about him. Um, I think you could name seventeen wide receivers right now. You'd prefer over him rest of the season. I think. I think. We yeah. Could do more than yeah. that. I think we could do more than that. Um, and that right there is why he's just. It's not it. He's even the wide receiver even with, forty-three right now before Devonte comes to town. Yeah, and you say Devonte goes somewhere else. I. It doesn't change how. I. I don't know. Yeah. What's What's going to happen? He's going to still keep scoring four points a week, huh? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? What do you What do you, What do you mean? Like. Like, his best week so far was nine targets, five receptions for 33 yards, and he got the touchdown. Like, I don't... I mean, you could probably name 24 receivers. I don't know. You can name so many receivers you'd prefer over him right now. Would you? I mean, the the guys that are always grouped with him, would you rather have Drake London? Yup. Oh, I'd, I'd want so much more than just Garrett would Wilson you, if I'm giving up Drake London. Would you? Hey, let me ask you this. Would you want Chris Olave? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that crazy? Wait, isn't that crazy? What? What a world. Um. Yeah. I. <sighs> here's, here's an interesting. Here's a real interesting one. Would you rather Jamison Williams than Garrett Wilson? Oh. Wow. I think it would, it would, it would, be, it would be Garrett. It would be Garrett there. It, it just would. Be don't. I mean, don't think him just with a good time. This time six months ago. But the pro- the problem is, I just like I was telling Kern when I had Garrett on my team yesterday, I was just praying for the day Puka was healthy again, so I could just bench Garrett. And now with Olave, I don't really want to bench Olave. With Garrett, I was just dreaming of the day I can Ooh. bench him, and just it doesn't feel good starting him right now at all. Well, that that's that's in large part because he's not good at fantasy football. That's really the only reason you don't want to start him, is because he's not start like, <laughs> like other than that, he'd be fine. Um, Would you rather have Pittman with Flacco at QB oh, or Garrett Wilson? Oh, oh Pittman with Flacco. That's so <laughs> gross. I hate the Colts so much, and they look so fucking bad. I, that might be a hot day. The but like, that I think that might be a better offense with Flacco. Oh, I don't know if that's a hot take at all. So I think the issue, so my issue with that just in general is it might be, but like that mediocrity of Kirk, Flacco, et cetera, Grant and Flacco won a Super Bowl, but like, right, it's, it's not going to win you what you want. Right. I mean, they're um, not winning anything. Uh, they might win a but few neither more the games Jets. with Flacco. Oh, man, it's just not winning shit. Um, you know. That ball's out. I just you got the ball. Wow, that's not good. Did Rashad just fumble that, or was it Bucky? Hopefully. I think he got it back. Sure? It was Bucky. It was seven. Are you sure it wasn't Mike Evans? Uh, eh. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, this, I, this I, I don't know. Um, 
I'm I'm curious to see where Wilson land or to where Devonte lands. I I really don't back. think it changes all that much in terms of how you start Garrett Wilson. Like, I think if you have Garrett Wilson, you're forced to start him. Um, let's still- yeah, I think no. Let, let's be real. Like if if if, if they get Devonte, it's an entirely different thing. I mean, you're gonna if they don't get Devonte, you might not feel good about it, but you have to start him every week just out of what it represents the opportunity to be. If they if they actually do land the trade, there is a there is a world where you are benching him on a on a week to week basis once we get past bye weeks, which is a huge huge shift. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I'd be terrified as a as a Garrett. I mean, Wilson. I think it's already terrifying when you got Adam Lazard getting more tar- like getting the higher like touchdown efficient targets right so that's what i was so if they don't get Devonte, i feel like that makes lazard very appealing in that wide receiver three flex position I mean, yeah i i have lazard on my redraft roster i guys i mean it, it's gonna take a long time to feel confident starting alan fucking lazard um, and if you're telling you're telling like, me he puts up one more week with Couple catches and a touchdown. Although I will say, looking, Devont- looking at and this, Devontae goes somewhere else. Looking at this after looking at Garrett Wilson, I'm like, man, that's an elite fucking stud, right? There. There you go. <laughs> um, no, especially once we get into bye weeks, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna, yeah. Now you want to see his targets get up again. That's the thing. Looking, I mean, what was gross about Wilson was he's he's getting targets and he's he got so five, many targets. Yeah. Like, See, but the issue is, I feel like you the wide receiver position. Oh, sorry, what? Well, just wide receivers in general, though. Those top tier of receivers. I mean, I feel like if you gave Wilson thirteen, fourteen targets, all of a sudden he'd vault up very high. Like it's those mid receivers. If you go like leaders of receivers, A and F. I mean, it just doesn't. Once you get past the first seven, eight, it just it's a muddied water there. Where you can easily have someone shoot up. I mean, Reed went from wide receiver twenty something to I mean, he should be in the top twelve for most people, it feels like right now. Wait, why is it? Okay. Stats twenty four season, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Points. So Nico's up here. Let's Yeah, look at these guys. Um so... I mean Diggs is down there at eleven or twelve after Marv. Jawan I mean Jawan's obviously a little bit of a fluke up there. So let's let's look at targets. Um, where's, where's oh, I, Garrett Wilson? Look at fucking, look at fucking Wandell Robinson. It's disgusting. What, uh, who, we don't like to, Lippy and I don't like to talk about Wandell Robinson because we got so much shit for not valuing him at all in uh, Fuckfest, so we don't really like it's, talking about Wandell Robinson, so we'd appreciate it if we, we just don't say his name anymore. Um, he's just close. But, uh... I mean, Nico just deserves... Fit ten plus targets yeah, every he's week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. He's nine in targets. Gary Wilson is number yeah, you nine. Can't, you can't. Bench, you can't bench that. Disgusting. I mean, you can bench Cortland Sutton. Why can't you bench? I mean, and he's done better than him. <laughs> I, I don't know if you would. Would I'm starting Cortland Sutton getting into the bye weeks? Like I, I think, mean, I think it's turns like, bench Sutton pretty much every week except one. Yeah, but I'm saying it's it. We're not we're not in bye week. Like this is, this is the first week of bye week. Yeah. Like you're going to be starting Sutton. You're going to be starting for the next seven so, or eight. So weeks. that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. Like it's like you probably can't. Like if if Devonte comes here, are you going to bench Gary Wilson in a couple of weeks? If he's not getting the, if he's not getting those targets, if you have one week so where he gets five targets, targets, I think yeah, yeah, I think I think he's benched because the hope right now, like like we were saying, I'm not disagreeing with any of the analysis of like. How he looks or how he's acting or is he a, like an elite receiver? I'm just saying purely in a you're looking at your roster making week in week out starts at in for this season like where we are right now. You're gonna start him because of the target share he's getting. But as soon as he doesn't get in those targets, he immediately becomes somebody who is easily benchable along with the Cortland Suttons or any of those types of guys. Like right. if he's not getting this type of target volume, then yeah, then he's just another dude. Like, the problem is, is, we're talking in a 12-team league where you start three receivers. You have people starting Josh Downs every week. <laughs> so, Garrett's always... I mean, you have people starting Wandale every single week, Judy every single week. You're going to have teams that need to... I mean, I guess I'd 
Shahid. I mean, you have people starting Engram and Flex right now in the first week of buys. But I mean, so that's if Wilson is doing this while being number nine in targets, when he's not ninth in targets, it's going to be abysmal. So I think I, I think I might agree. Um, that being said, we don't know where. Obviously, we don't know where Devontae's going to land. Um, I just I don't I don't know why are why are there stars next to? Uh... Are those the people you're scouting? Oh, it's because I it's because I, I have them starred. I was like, what what is the what does this mean? Um, this is interesting. We can just we can just look at some stats real quick. Um, Alvin Kamara. Oh wait, yeah, Alvin Kamara most fantasy points. Uh, yeah, he he's far and away got more fantasy points than every other skill position players. I mean, Saquon's right there. Derrick Henry, this this elite trio at the top. Um, it's really interesting. The the Mason thing is really big. That. I think that speaks more to. I don't think waivers should open up until a couple days before the season, because it, it was one day of Jonah not paying attention, and all of a sudden he lost his entire season. That's a great catch by London. Because well, I mean, I guess it just speaks to Jonah should pay attention. I guess more than anything, too, though. Yeah, I I don't know what how. When I was what day was he picked up on? Um... Like, how far before the season was it? August 29th. So, the season... Oh, the week before. The week before. Yeah, so not too terrible. Yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I'll i tell you what What I really think is that we drafted too early. Is But you know you know where I am on that. Um, that, that was just a that was weird, co- weird thing of somehow... We drafted so early. Jonathan Taylor at RB6. I have this fucker written off as dead. Um, the vibes on the offense aren't good, but he's still a dog. Yeah, what What the... Well, I thought Shane Steichen was a good coach. I really did. I no longer think well, that. Uh, it was a really bad look on Sunday when Richardson came back in and first play was a read option. Or then he comes out yeah, right after looked, that. Yeah, it makes Steichen look like a clown. That was a crazy, that was a weird look. Yeah, it makes, it makes him look like a Looney Tune clown, is what it does. Uh, James Conner looking good. Good job, Hubbard. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the uh, tight end, sir. Where would you, what's the worst re- running back or receiver you would trade for whoever you want to say is the best tight end, McBride or Kelsey? Currently, the best tight end is Dallas Goddard. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's because three Saints defenders ran into each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, Brian Thomas Jr. Would, would, would you would you trade McBride or Kelsey for Brian Thomas Jr.? Uh, I I mean, just the way my brain works, I would want Brian Thomas. Ayuk. I I'm a pronounced Ayukater. That's a that's a bad one for me. Garrett Wilson. I'll take the tight end. Even though tight end sucks. Yeah, wow. I, would, I would take the. T- I would take. Uh, so Pickens, Devontae Smith. Oh, what? No, I would definitely take Devontae Smith. Huh? I'd take all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't. Who's, who's I mean, your tight end? Who's your tight end one for the rest of the season? Or like in in that? Who's your what's your batch for right there? Because like I I do not think this finishes like it looks right now. Uh, it it feels like it 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 feels like it's gonna be Bowers just on the vibes of everything. Right. That's an all right, all right, all right, Bowers manager. Okay, um, but but here here's the deal though. Do you, I mean McBride? Uh, McBride just doesn't feel like he's gonna score touchdowns, and Bowers is just a freak. And if he just gets those red zone targets, he it's him. I don't think it's Kelsey, and I don't think it's McBride. So then, who is it? Uh, the Lions yeah. just want to run every single touchdown in. Can we sort this by targets too? Yeah. Real quick? Yeah. Um, Look at Jake Ferguson getting fucking those targets out <laughs> with the <a> couch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
How the fuck do they go with goddamn? Yeah. My old friend, Hunter Henry. Such a bad position. What a they're going for fourth and three here. I mean, the Bowers with with, with Bowers going to get the, the Bowers targets are only going to go up. So like, that, that, I can't say anything against that. Like that that feels right. He doesn't have any touchdowns yet. Hey, you, you take away Adams and just Bowers getting yeah. better. I don't know. It feels like it's going to be Bowers. Feels like he's going to be scoring twelve plus points a week for the rest at, after halfway through the season. But and he's going to get some touchdowns. Like that's how good might he? God damn, how good might he be? I don't know. Anyway, I, just, think, I think he's going to end up being better than fourth overall Kyle Pitts. Uh, <laughs> um, what a. However, I will say, I will say, what a start this week. What a start this week, huh? I mean, why? I mean, like we were saying earlier, Alexander, if you get six plus points out of Pitts, you're going to be happy and it looks like you might get double digits. He's, he's catching Evans right now. He's, he's, he's riled up and is coming after him. Um, so. This game might be the game of the year, of th- one of the best Thursday night football games no, of the year. No, that's we that's because now. the ends are on Thursday night football. Uh, what was that Texans game we saw that's coming up for uh, Thursday night football? It's a good one. I think I think it's us and the Jets for Thursday. We have we have, uh, so, we have so many prime time games. We don't even know what to fucking do with ourselves. We uh, we've got Christmas Day with the Ravens. We go to Dallas for no, Monday night it, football. Yeah, it's that Ravens Christmas Day game. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's that's a that's a mental hurdle team for us. That's it's it's Pitts Pitts ten yards. Um, God damn! Is this is this Pitts best three quarters oh. as a pro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not I'm not fucking joking. <laughs> it's nice to see him getting targeted. Like he's actually good. Yeah, it's the Pitts party. Let's go, baby. Let's go. It, oh. Oh. Did that linebacker just push Pitts open? On that route. Also, that's crazy. Also, just just say, talk a, talk about being freed from Shane Waldron. Super excited for JSN this year. Super excited for JSN next season. I almost wish we had keepers just so I could keep them next year. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like there's, I feel like his real coming out party will be whenever they eventually the locket thing. The is lockets over. when lockets con yeah. The locket still looks good, man. That's the problem. It's like you, yeah. you keep, keep preserving what he gets. Like when they were when they're trying to come back in the end of that game, it was it was locket over and over again. Yeah. Fucking TK coming down with the one twice. That sucked. Uh oh well. Say la vie. Um Jalen Hurts just had a fun season. It's huh? not even. Wait, huh? Oh, projections. I was like, "There's." Yeah. Okay. All right. I was like, "Who, who do you, who who do you guys think is the wide receiver one at the end of the season?" Nico Collins. Yeah. You just wanted me to say that. Obviously, yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, well, if neighbors is healthy, it could be neighbors. I mean, uh, Jefferson. Yeah, who, yeah. Is, who is the wide receiver one at the end of the year? If if neighbors is healthy, neighbors is the wide. Uh, He's um, going to get more um, fucking absurd. Um, Nico, Nico hasn't even started to break out yet. He's going to start getting three touchdowns a game. You know, just so <laughs> way. Um, once the O line stops getting eighty fucking penalties a game, um, I think I think Tunsil's close to almost double. The second most penalized player in the league. Nico with five less catches than neighbors, but a hundred more yards is insanity. Well, so that's one of the nice things about the penalties is it really manufactures a lot of yards for Nico because we have to get so many more yards. Our average start. <laughs> no, no. You want to you know a fun stat for the Texans? Uh, our average third down position is third and 10.1. For, for third downs, our average third down yardage is third and 10.1. So, I don't think that's what you want at the end of the day. No, it's not. No, I mean, dude, the O line has gotten so bitterly. So you got you got to look into it. The penalties have been insanity. If we could, like, oh, that's a horse collar, isn't it? I I don't know. Maybe not. You can't grab a man by the. There's no horse collar in the pocket. There's no well, horse collar no. in the pocket, huh? Yeah. I, ju- I just learned that on watching something last week, but that was a, that was a call. Well, so what was the call, what was the call in the uh, Brazil game that they said Hertz was under pressure, so his throw can't be intentional grounding? That made no sense. Still, well, if you so intentional grounding is when you're under duress, 
and you're uh, inside in the, the pocket. pocket. But if you're Correct. not, he, uh, but if you're in the pocket and you're not under duress, then it doesn't. Uh, but he was under duress, though. That's the thing. I, it was it was weird. I'm still confused by it. He's, he's really built different. different. He's built different. You might be under the duress, but he's built different. Yeah, there, there might have been a <laughs> translation issue with Portuguese or something. I don't know. Um, Fucking Koo missing a field goal in this game, but hitting a 58 yarder. God damn it! Poor, poor Saints. That's that's brutal. Wait. Lead the oh, lead the lead the league in scoring. Allowed four defensive touchdowns. Two and two. Alec Pierce being the wide receiver 25 is hilarious. <laughs> I felt so bad. Yeah, well, I, this, this I think this started with pendulum swings. I, I'm willing to bet the pendulum swings the other way on Alec Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't think he I, I, I think it might already be starting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt so bad by uh, when I traded. I think it was to Jay Pauly at Fuckfest. I traded Pierce. I like I traded Jahan Dotson. To Jay Polly for like Pierce in a second. And at the time, like, oh, this is so smart. And then Dotson had like, you know, his great rookie season. I'm like, I'm just the biggest dummy in the world. And then it turns hey, out like it's just the biggest nothing burger of a trade ever. And can you look at Amon Ra's uh, history in D Gen, please? Uh, D Gen, sure. Um, Thank you for your service, sir. Absolutely. Why isn't he. Uh... That's weird. Where, where's... He's tipped in raw. <laughs> I, I mean... Where... Go St. Brown. Try, try St. Brown, maybe. There it is. Okay, so 2021. So is it Aaron Rodgers and Amon Ra for Chubb? No, 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 no. That's Amari. That is Amari, sir. Amari oh. Rodgers... And Amon Ross St. Brown for Chubb Hubbard on third. Wow. What oh. the fuck is that? <laughs> it's, it's just beautiful. <laughs> what the fuck is this? It's almost as good as uh, Bevo trading Amon Ra for Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, I mean, my, I've, got a, I've got an absolute favorite that I always go back to. Was that the, was that the one that was conditioned on, like, yardage? Yes. It was conditioned on Teddy Bridgewater's finish, and if he would have done better, yeah. it just would have been a first, but since he did worse, it was a Monroe. Wait, it was why, lovely. Why can't I see? Because it was a pre-draft trade, so it was a pick. So, like, oh. the history of that pick doesn't show up that he got traded four first or whatever for it. Oh. Yeah, that's, that, that's the best of all time. The four firsts? Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at his face. He knows it was a bad trade. He says, I tricked you, Andy. I tricked you. Slightest little smirk as he's taking the picture. Hoot, any thoughts on uh, Alexander and I winning DGen this year? Uh, let me see y'all's roster. Let's see it. Wow, Baker just looking great there. Yeah. ETN, ETN. God, how, we want to talk about bad vibes. How fucked are the vibes in Jacksonville? They're it's not, not good. They're not good, Bob. <laughs> they're not good. Um... <laughs> It's tough oh, out there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you got a lot of Jacksonville guys, so <laughs> <hopefully> <laughs> this is an AFC South team. Wow, you were talking about benching Sutton. We haven't played him once this year, sir. Fuck Dude, him. y'all need to... Why are you not playing Sutton? I honestly have no idea. Talk to Alexander. <laughs> he's the boss. I mean, he's had two good weeks. But he's probably started. about to have a third good week. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he's, he, so he's probably about to have a fourth he's and a fifth a and a sixth. Oh, that's a bad fumble by God. Oh, good recovery, Evans. Oh, God damn. I don't know. I'd be I'd, I'd be thinking, it, it, you're going you're gonna to be happy if Sutton come by week season. Who, you know, who, yeah, are, who are we benching, though, for Sutton? We're going to bench Kareem, I guess? Yeah, Kareem. Would be, Kareem would it's be Kareem. Good. I mean, Kareem's the only one. You're not benching B T Brian Thomas. You're not benching Nico or Worthy or Godwin. Yeah. Does Evans get those yards? Uh, if he gained any yards, yes. Oh, since I lost so yards. Would, okay, okay, okay. If they would have gained like five yards, yes, he would have gotten the five yard difference. Okay. I'm fine with that. Um, 
I know. Like, I, I love, I love the talent. I'm very concerned about both of your running back situations. I, I think the concern's more at the QB position with Stafford and uh, nothing behind it at QB two. The running back will be fine at the end of the day because Ford's going to have a role, and Brooks should be something at worst case scenario during bye weeks. Oh, I didn't see odd Brooks. Okay. Yeah. Watson, okay, for uh, I mean, once Drake starts playing, Flacco will be Flacco will be fine. You know, you'll 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 you'll, be, you'll survive a night with Flacco. We're trying to make our first playoffs ever. It'll be beautiful. Yeah, um, the fucking um, yeah, ETN. You know, you know what's a trade I want to see? A, an interesting ass trade. Uh, go to. What what uh what lead did I trade you for a chain in uh Lippy? Is that, that a uh, fuck fest? Did I trade? Uh yes yes yes. Yeah, go, what was go that trade? One oh four. That trade looks like six months late because you got, you got a first round pick out of that. Who'd you pick? It was the one oh four, right? Yeah, it was a good it was a good pick. Oh, and I got I, a, I got a first I think round I took, pick here. I think I took Drake, uh, Drake May for that or something like that. So I got a chain and a. F- first next year and you got this year's first and a second uh, it would have been a late first it would have been like Andy's first or something like that yeah so what what, did, what happened to that those two first those, I, those sadly, two I sadly think that's why I took Drake May over Jaden Daniels and I'd like to not think about that still <laughs> um, what about the, what, what the second the second this year we don't whose pick was that let's see uh, team, team 11 11 the fuck is Team Eleven? I it's don't, not. I don't know. It, it's uh, it's uh, the the PC version Tate. is so bad. Uh, Tate. Let me, let me... It's Tate's shitty team. Here's H. Here's your team, H N. Maybe it's Pick Eleven. I don't know. It was uh no Razorfish. It was Razorfish and my first this year. So you said it, Ben said it. Oh, that's bad. So you get Sunit. You took Sunit and you took. Drake May, so I got it should have been Jay- and I get and I get your I get your pick next year. No, it's uh, Andy. Andy's pick next year. Okay. Andy or Tate's? Oh, uh, let me see. Well, it's not Tate. It better not think. be Tate. So that's that's, yeah, that's, that's, a, a, that's, a, that's a great trade. Uh, it was Jay Pauly's. Okay, it's Jay Pauly's. That's a great Jay trade. Oh, so, so it's, it'll be a late pick. It'll be a late pick. It's gonna okay. be. It's, he's he's a playoff team. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, I, 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 I remember at the time oh, thinking that was bad. like I, I like I thought that was a very interesting trade. I liked it. I went back and forth on it a bunch. I'm, I'm, I uh, think Drake. So Drake hasn't played yet. I, I still think Drake's going to be really good. Uh, obviously, if I would have taken Jaden, that would just look absolutely sensational right now. Well, this. yeah, this is a this is a must win game for me. I, I need to put the beat down on you, Hoot. Look at this. Uh, and you're facing Evans there, brutal. Oh, but you have London. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then I got from Hoot. Um, uh, from from Hoot Empire. Uh, yeah, I have to have another Evans touchdown real quick though. Which we, we 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 over here we love we love that pick. Ooh, I'm glitching out. Okay, did this did, what happened to this play? It's like the, it was a run for a yard, maybe max, uh, maybe half a yard. By a buggy. Is, is no one else's TV freaking out like it's a fucking the yeah. signal signal looks lovely right now here. Yeah, oh god it. damn it. Sorry. I I, I, hate, I hate I hate watching stuff with Lippin. It's just terrible. Um but uh, yeah, I uh... the London and Olave trades year after year being like within a couple of third round picks of each other, I thought was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that. It, it truly uh, that's the thing that felt like the most like an NFL thing where it's like, okay, this is like a little inflation on that trade from last year. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Huh. I wonder is Singletary going to play? No. It doesn't look good for Singletary this week. I really, I really need Mike Evans to not score here. Um, Third and two. I feel like they're running the ball here, but touchdown puts the game away. It feels like. Yeah, I just really need Mike not to fuck me anymore. Um, he's, he's gonna come on. Give me, give me that fit. No, 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 no. <laughs> is, uh, is Tracy available? Oh, Evans was open too. <laughs> Oh Baker, 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 get up, get up, get up, get up, get up! Oh shit! Is that his Baker, name? Baker, 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 Baker. It's okay, it just twisted. Okay. 
It's just twisted. He's still walking weird. Wow, that's scary. Oh, that's the tackle I got through. Pretty modest. Wow. He just wrecked his ass. Ouch. Okay, do they show? Okay. Oh, well, he's going to be okay. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Is Trevor Lawrence just Danny, Danny Dimes, though? Does he suck? I have vibes. Vibes. Those, those are on. He's he has any quarterback ever started their career with successive worse vibes. It's terrible. The vibe. I mean, talk about excuses. A enough. I mean, the excuses yeah. for Lawrence are year after well, year after yeah, year. I mean, year. I mean, and they 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 just gave him you know the brink struck full of cash. They gave him the Danny Dimes contract. I mean, I, it's bigger than the Danny Dimes contract. Yeah, it's bigger, it's bigger than that. Yeah. I mean, oh, you got fifty. Oh, you got fifty versus forty. Clear, QB, clear, clear. QB, QB twenty one is brutal for Trevor Lawrence. Yep, tank for Trevor. Um, and I, I think that coaching staff is almost gone. So that's like a mid season <laughs> fire thing that's about to go down over there. The yeah, but they will. Been... There'll be a, there'll be a resurgence after that. There always is when there's shit vibes. Honestly, Trevor's probably a good buy low candidate in like a. I don't know. I'm not talking dynasty necessarily, but like in a redraft league. I mean, I think maybe for dynasty, maybe. Yeah, maybe for dynasty too. Because like, he's definitely gonna have a rebound the second half of the season when they fire the coaching staff and like, kind of like unle you know play for themselves and all that stuff. Like it's just it's just that's just how they will. That should always happens, but. I don't know. Long term, like who's who's the who's the coach there next year? They're not gonna get the elite offensive. Coach. Ben Johnson's not going there. Slowick is not yeah. going there. So like, who who do they? If they get another kind of you know what? If the Saints make the playoffs, is this you know Clint Kubiak's Ever Lawrence team? Yeah, uh, Bill, Billy B. No, Co- isn't is Coughlin still a bit in the picture there? Like as like a executive or whatever. Yeah. Belichick would be God. Belichick and Josh McDaniels would be fucking hilarious. It, I, I I feel like it's a Belichick. Belichick's definitely going to get a job somewhere next year, unless he's just happy on TV doing it now. I, that doesn't feel like a Bill Belichick thing, though. No, he he's not going to stop until he gets the all time wins record. Like he's 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 with, he's one coaching contract away from that. Like why would why would he not go to get that? Tom Coughlin, where is he right now? Okay, he's alive. That's promising. He's currently uh, works as a consultant for the Raiders. What the hell? Speaking of still alive, y'all see the Jimmy Carter the other day? <laughs> that did not do anything for making me think he's actually alive. I just like if he is alive, I feel bad, man. Like, put my ass down before I get like that. Y'all all have permission. People listening to the pod have permission. It's not. It, it, it didn't look good for him. Gets to that point. Oh, that, that was that was just terrible. They're wheeling him out, acting like they're like spending time with him, and it li- literally looks like they wheeled out a corpse. Yeah. So we get oh. burned. That was that. Oh, that was just terrible. Absolutely terrible. I mm, I don't know. I don't. I, I, do you think the Saints actually can make some noise this year, or and believe oh. in Clint Kubiak, sir? I think that we were a team that had some good started with some good vibes and some belief in themselves, and actually might have had like we we were in a similar way to the. Texans of two years, like a pre-CJ Stroud Texans, we were a team that had a lot of, like, I think we're better than those teams, like, but it's, what, the comparison I'm making is that we have a lot of, like, solid players <laughs> you're, you're definitely across the better board. Than those teams. No, but I'm saying you, you have, it, it, it's a team of, like, good players that are going to play well. It's a team that's going to do well, and I think we came in with good vibes, and I think we have a spark, and had a spark, and I still... Are we gonna do anything? Like we're not a fucking play, like Super Bowl contender. Can we can fight and be one game or out or one game in of the playoffs? Yeah, we've been like that for the last two years, and I don't think this team is any worse or maybe not that much better. But I do think there's a chance to be a little a little better than those teams. 
Now, that all came before our entire interior line, which was weak already. Like, a, a weak offensive line suffered multiple offensive line injuries. In that scenario, where we can't, we can basically can't run the ball to the right side because Penning still can't be even, like, the 20th best right tackle in the league, which is, if you want to look at Saints fuck-ups like that, that's going to go down as one of the, th- the thing that really stunk this this type of whatever the, this attempt of this version of the team was. But, I, I, no, I mean, if your question is, am, am I putting them as, as left for dead like you, we were doing before? No, I, I don't think I don't think they're left for dead. Um, I don't think they're a contender or elite team, but I think they're whatever that other group is of yeah, tier three. two follow-up questions. Yeah. Uh, as someone who has Connor in a few leagues, uh, it, you're terrified he's always going to get hurt. Obviously, Kamara has been blessed with great health. Does giving a 29-year-old running back 25-plus touches a week not terrify you? On top of that, uh, should we go back to the old number rules where receivers have to be in the 80s? Because this is terrible, with Ray Ray McLeod being 34. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's an uh, awesome oh, Bijan, Bijan, there we go. There run. you go. That's what you've been waiting for. Uh, uh, just Ray, make, Ray Ray McLeod should not be number thirty-four. No, that is the 30, terrible. The thirty-two is gr- the thirty-two is gross. They definitely shouldn't allow that. A hundred percent agree. As far what, what was the first one again? It was um, uh, just twenty-five plus touches to a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. running back. No, I mean, uh, less I'll tell you, this, you gotta dial thing, that back a little. Yeah, we're gonna dial that back a little bit. Uh, Kendra's practicing. Kendra, as soon as Kendra is out of the doghouse and or healthy enough to play, it doesn't matter if he's good or not. He's gonna get seven to ten carries. Like he's gonna get touches and get get into the game because we need more. We need juice in the running game, and we're gonna do everything we can and squeeze every hole we can. To, like squeeze every everything we can to try and get a drop of it from anyone we can. So he's gonna get chances, and I do that'll keep. Uh, Kamara's touches down compared to the end of the season. I do think, from a fantasy standpoint, Kamara's still going to get all of those little dump off pass. Like he's still, a, he's always going to be a, a, an awesome play as long as he's in this offense. It's just going to feed him, uh, feed him carries and feed him short passes. But uh, my my favorite thing about the whole thing is again that we didn't succumb. Like the the Houdat Nation and like the online community of Saints fans is very strong about. We should sign Kamara, and like we need to pay him and extend him, and you know he's a leader of the team, and he's this, exactly what you want from a player, and he is like he is exactly what you want from an NFL football player. He's amazing. He fights through injury for the team. He puts the team first. Like he's a guy in the locker room. He's a leader. He's elite. Like all of that. I am so happy seeing how we are, even though he's successful. Seeing how he is playing, we are playing him this year that we did not extend him, and I still do not want to extend him in the next. Like I, you, you, it has been amazing. He is great. I think he'll have another, potentially another year or two left. But like, no, like how do I feel seeing touch? Like he's got, already has broken ribs, and you know, it's like yeah, it's it's terrifying. I would be terrified to have him on a four year contract right now. Yeah, it's. Uh... Scary. It just feels like we've been. I've been told my entire life that old running backs suck, and then this year all the old running backs are good. And so well, I just think the, I think the running game is. It, it's just come. It's this this cyclical nature of we're going back to running backs. Like the return of the the running game is what I think is making that that bump up. Not that old running. I think. I don't know. You think I it's a product of just old running backs never got the shot though? Because you're. We churn in the new generation of running backs so quickly. It, ah, it's. I mean, you have Jones, you have Connor, you have Mixon, you have Camaro, you have Henry. That's five right there. That might be the whole. Is that everybody? Yeah, and, and none of are any of those guys actually thirty. I think they're all like twenty eight, twenty nine. I think we've just we've made it that it used to be thirty, and you'd say, okay, they're yeah, thirty. Now it's time to worry. Just now people are worried at twenty seven and twenty eight. So I think that's maybe. Yeah. More I mean, people up. forget Gurley's younger than all of them. Yeah, but Gurley had no knees. Ah, oh, poor Gurley. Man, yeah. that's a that's a tough fuck fest trade. Um, oh, Gur- Gurley is thirty. Sorry, Gurley is thirty. Look at him! What a great smile. Um, oh man! Yeah. That one was tough. Come over the trade. Yeah, uh, Gurley for Gurley and two guys for Eckler. 
And you were really hyped that first year in Atlanta when he started out the season oh, real nice. That was, yeah, that was the season I traded for him. That was when he, uh, that was the year. You thought you were the genius. Oh, I thought it was so smart. Um, and that was, you know, that was the year. All anyone remembers about that season for him is when his knees finally gave out and when, uh, and when he didn't go down and scored the touchdown and the Lions won because, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Gave him the ball back. Um, Man, he was so good. And, 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 and did Eckler have both of his number one seasons after that? Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. yeah, that was that's called <laughs> tough nuts right there. Um, that's pretty. That's that's pretty. Rough. Yeah, and then I, I I don't know what the fuck I did with those seconds. I probably that's where you have to make enough trades to where you don't realize how bad the bad ones. I are. I mean, I'm I'm right behind you in fuckfest. I've traded a lot in this league. Um, well, that's the purpose of Fuckfest. Yeah, it's to fuck, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk, talk about fucking look at my team in Fuckfest. I, I was trying to chill out this year, and instead we're fucking cooking with yeah, gas. You're, and you're, you're fucking like crazy this year. Um, uh, D- Wan- how, do, how do you get Wanda? Was this the league I dropped him in? It was. Yeah, right? I think so. Or, yeah, right. So you oh, got for him in 305. Um, you traded him to me for Fab. And then I traded him two CJs <laughs> for a fourth. Um, wait, how? Then he just end, then he just ended up on his roster. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, how do I have him? Wait, <laughs> sleeper? What? What is this? Um, this is so. This this is what got me and Lippy chewed out by the Fuckfest Brigade. About well, that was just because I, I I I had to get rid of players. I had too many players, and just I will say, wound up. Uh, my favorite traded fuckfest to Singletary for one fab. That's a. Uh, that's that's my favorite. That's actually not my favorite. My favorite, my favorite fuckfest trade is my friend Lippy giving me a good deal on my friend CJ Stroud. That's my so, favorite. That's my favorite fuckfest trade. Yeah, that was a nice trade. They're going for this fourth down. Oh shit! And they got it. Oh, he's in. Nope. Yep, Mooney. Wow. Uh, Mooney balling out. Who started him earlier? That's uh, Dustin, but he's playing the guy with Gibbs and the e- his Eagles and Jameson Williams all on by, so it's kind of irrelevant. He's going to win anyways. So this this trade is kind of evolving. Um, Andrews, uh, Andrews is relevant. Yeah. Who are those first, though? You have no idea. Um, yeah, trying to unravel all this. Well, there are a bunch of more futures. No, there's a couple of there. there. Team six, so whatever the hell first. that is. Uh, but even if two it is seconds, two first, a third, Laporta, Quinton. I, I mean, even if you take out Andrews, it's probably it's probably fair value for Lamar. Yeah. I mean, it depends. It, it's going to depend on where some of those first fall. But yeah, I mean, I still I still do that. Like, I've done smaller trades, but trade like you just have to sometimes if you want to buy into the like they can be one of those guys quarterbacks after they've already been drafted it is like that many firsts and shit it just is tough and i have like, got a baker and dgen i feel like two firsts really wasn't <laughs> that bad um and that's not that's nice wait who <laughs> that was Jaden. that also that pick is Jaden daniels just so you know <laughs> <laughs> that's Jaden baker and Pittman for us Jesus, that's a bad one. What was that? Twenty twenty. Ooh, oh yeah, I mean, at the time, that probably probably seems pretty nice. I don't know. Oh, that was with. K- I didn't know that was with you, Mister. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were just that's claiming just, the shit the out point. of him. <laughs> yeah. I could have swore that was with Hulu stonks. Oh man. Yeah. Just, just fuck you, Hoot. Um. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> Brutal. It's always good to see one of your bad ones, like you said. <laughs> it's a, it's a, <laughs> none of none of these picks have happened yet. These these are all these are all. Oh, is, oh this is the future ones. Yeah, yeah, this is the the Drake trade. I'm know. telling you, it's it's the it's literally the same trade as the uh, just with it's, the, it's two more it's two more thirds, yeah. but it's the same trade yeah. as the <laughs> Alave trade. trades. <laughs> I mean, it's it great that both of those dudes have been traded. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I, just fair uh, value is fair value. Yeah, I've been on here nearly three hours, so I am going to get off the. One yeah, this is a this is a good time to call it. We've got the this game winding down, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure having you on. Um, all it's always nice when you make an appearance, Hoot. Yeah, it, yeah, it no, was. thank, thank, thank you, Joe. Always, always happy to be here. Appreciate y'all doing this. All right, well, that's we'll be back in two weeks. Yep, back in two weeks. Um, we'll go from there.